night has fallen here in New Orleans, but in these parts, that just means the fun's about to begin. Here in the Big Easy tonight, the biggest party is indoors at the Louisiana Superdome. The Troy Trojans looking to cap the historic season, taking on Southern Mississippi. The Golden Eagles trying to stay red hot. It's two schools with a lot to cheer about, meeting in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. everyone to ESPN College Football, the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Tonight, Conference USA Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles taking on the champions of the Sun Belt Conference, the Trojans of Troy. With my partner Sean King, I'm Eric Collins. We've got two schools meeting on the football field for the first time in 31 years. And Sean, I know you're excited about this game because of two guys who share the same last name. That's right, Eric. Southern Mississippi true freshman wide receiver, DeAndre Brown. America may not know who he is, but he's as good as it gets. Fast, big, explosive. He will emerge onto the national scene tonight. Outstanding wide receiver. And the quarterback for Troy, Levi Brown, forced to play midseason because of injury, and he's been nothing if not spectacular. Has filled in admirably in this offense and done an outstanding job for the Troy Trojans. There is first-year head coach with Southern Miss, Larry Fedora. Fedora wearing the visor, not the Fedora. He has done a fantastic job. Southern Miss winning their last four games to become bowl eligible. Fedora will be matching wits with longtime Troy head coach, Larry Blakeney. Blakeney now in his 18th season, leading the Troy Trojans to their third bowl game. And we're ready to go. Ball is on a tee. We're going to kick this one off. This is the eighth running of the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Southern Mississippi has won the toss. They have elected to receive the football. Take note, Southern Mississippi wearing yellow jerseys. This is actually somewhat of a minor story here. They should be wearing their white jerseys. They're the road team. This is going to incur a penalty after this kickoff. Short kickoff fielded by Freddie Parham. And Parham makes a couple of guys miss, gets out to the 27-yard line. And that is where the Golden Eagles will start on offense. And on cue. Failure to wear proper equipment. Five or timeout. Southern Mississippi. It's a 30-second timeout. This is by design. Being the road team, they're supposed to be wearing their white uniforms. Larry Fedora said, uh-uh, we're not going to do it. We want to wear our road gold uniforms, and that's what they've got on right now. They said, who cares about the penalty of losing a timeout? We're just playing with two timeouts in the first half. There's Austin Davis, first-year signal caller for Southern Miss. Both these teams like to play fast-paced football, spread offenses, get guys in different spots and try and create opportunities in space. And before the first snap from scrimmage, a flag comes down. Dead ball, false start. Offense, number one, five-yard penalty. It remains first down. All right, Sean, take me through your impact players for Southern Mississippi. And we'll start with the running back from Southern Mississippi, Damon Fletcher. Dual threat, can run and catch the ball out of the backfield. Sean Nelson, NFL prospect at tight end, has caught three touchdowns as your outstanding athlete. And Gerald McGrath anchors that defense, leads the team in tackles with 126. Haven't had a play from scrimmage yet. We've already seen two yellow hankies on the field. All right, now we're underway in earnest. This is Damian Fletcher, the all-time leading rusher for Southern Mississippi. Over 4,000 yards in his first three years. He has a decent gain on first down. Tackle made by Tavares Williams. Take a look top of your screen, and you will see the starting lineups for Southern Mississippi. Their offense coming into today's game averaging 30 points a night. 
Out of the shotgun now, Austin Davis, redshirt freshman from Meridian, Mississippi. Pitch out, ball is taken away. A touchdown, Jorick Calvin. He knew what was coming. Eric, what a defensive play for Calvin. This Troy defense plays against a spread attack every day in practice. They know the tendencies. They know the different nuances. They were prepared for that play. You don't see that very often. The quarterback comes in and takes the pitch away from the intended back. What a start. Take a look here, Sean. What exactly happened here? Well, this is an option play for the quarterback, Austin Davis. He has the option of pitching the football backwards, or he can keep the football. And they're going to review, was it a forward pass? But to me, it looks like it was going backwards, so I think the play is going to stand. It was officially called a fumble on the field, and that's what I get from this vantage point. Although, from that angle, it looks like the pitch may have been down the line. Now, right now, Southern Miss hoping against hope that that was indeed determined to be forward. If it's forward, it's a forward pass, and it's just a whole bunch of nothing. But if it is indeed backwards, it's a fumble. And as you see, Austin, if you see, even though the running back is behind him, the pitch looks as if it almost is directly down the 20-yard line. So it'll be interesting. Is there enough evidence to overturn the ruling on the field, which was a fumble recovered by Troy for the touchdown? And if it's not overturned, what a way to start the game for Southern Miss. You duck, you dock the timeout, you call for a false start, and in your second play from scrimmage, a fumble for a touchdown to the defense. Now Southern Miss, they knew they were running into a buzzsaw. Over the last couple of years, the Troy Trojans have had opportunistic defensive players all over their lineup. George Calvin. On the field stands. Touchdown. It is a touchdown. Jorah Calvin, just one of the latest playmakers for Troy. So a fantastic start for Troy. They haven't had the football yet. And they've already got six points, looking to make it seven. Sam Glussman, extra point is true. And just like that, the Troy Trojans Feeling good about themselves with a 7-0 lead. All right, John, let's talk about this game. I know you're excited about this one because we have two teams in today's game that really had to fight down the stretch to earn their way into this game. You're right. Troy knew they had to win the Sun Belt Championship, and they did that, so they're representing that conference. And Southern Miss got off to a rough start. They were forced to run the table the last four weeks of the season. Able to do that, you have two teams that are playing outstanding football on both sides of the football. Exciting game we should have tonight. Two great offenses. But Troy says their defense not so bad by the first possession. Yeah. Larry Fedora is going to have to figure something out. Larry Fedora matching with the Larry Blakeney. They both have, for the most part, called all the right shots in the second half of the season. Both these teams really wondering in midseason whether or not they get a chance to go bowling, but turning it on in the second half of the season as their players started to figure out what the coaching staff wanted. And that's what you want, Eric. A lot of times at the beginning of the year, there's going to be a little rust, maybe a little inconsistency if it's a new system, especially in Southern Miss's case. But as a head coach, you want to always see your ball club improving as the year goes on, and both of these teams have been able to do that. Michael Taylor will kick it off for the second time in 50 seconds. Freddie Parham returns to the two-yard line. And this time, Parham tries the right side. He's got an alley. Flag is down on the field, and so is Parham. He's down at the 48-yard line. A sensational return if it stands. If this goes against Southern Mississippi. you got to wonder. Is this the worst one minute of play in the history of Golden Eagle football? Well, you know, a lot of times you script the first couple plays. You definitely don't script them to turn out like this. There are two fouls on the play. Offside, 29, kicking team. Holding, return team. The foul's offset, replay. Yeah. 
We played 60 seconds of football in southern Mississippi. <laughs> They've been called for two penalties. They've turned the football over, allowed a defensive touchdown, and already had to burn a timeout. <laughs> but they got to wear the uniforms that they wanted to wear. That's right. And I must say, I wasn't sure I was going to like the gold on gold, but I actually like it. It looks pretty spiffy. You play like you feel. <laughs> yeah, southern Mississippi taking a page out of uh, Southern Cal. A couple of weeks ago, they were playing UCLA in the battle for Los Angeles. And Pete Carroll and USC decided that they wanted to not wear the assigned uniform color. They didn't want to wear white, and they took a penalty. Lost a timeout at the beginning of the game. UCLA followed suit and lost a timeout as well. Larry Blakeney decided he didn't want to go that far. <laughs> so they still have the full complement of three timeouts here in the first half. Well, I don't think Troy and Southern Miss quite have the tradition that USC and UCLA have. All right, this is now the third kickoff for Michael Taylor in 60 seconds of playing time. You know, something that will be interesting to watch is that kickoff team has to be winded. I mean, <laughs> the coach teaches you to sprint down, and you generally get a little break after they kick off. But we'll see if they're able to get down as quick on the third kickoff in the first minute of the game as they did on the first. We're on pace to have 180 kickoffs by Troy State this game. This is Parham again, this time starting at the three. And Parham stays on his feet. Out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Good return for the junior from Margaret, Alabama. Monday night, it's an NFC North battle from Soldier Field in Chicago. The NFL's oldest rivalry, the Packers and Bears. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins at 7 with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. All right, Austin Davis and Southern Miss, they'll try again. Second consecutive drive starting at the 27-yard line for the Golden Eagles. Pass is complete. There's the big fella, DeAndre Brown. And Brown gets out close to first down yards before he's pushed out of bounds. This kid has got a whole lot of talent. Six feet, six inches tall, 230 pounds, just a freshman. And, and the, the freshman wide receiver down at Alabama, Julio Jones, everybody knows about him. He gets all the hype, and he's worth it. But DeAndre, DeAndre Brown is just as good. He is such a talented kid, and he's so big when you see him in person. 1,100 yards in his first go-around as a collegiate. True freshman from Ocean Springs, Mississippi. We'll call his name quite a bit. All right, they're going to try a flea flicker. Man is wide open. It's Parham. Gerald Baptiste. Touchdown. <laughs> Gerald Baptiste got behind the defense. A 65 4 yard touchdown. It looks like we may have ourselves a track meet tonight. Outstanding play call by Darrell White, who's offensive coordinator over at Southern Miss. They're not holding anything back tonight. I think we're going to get all the stops from beach. Offense and defense, they came to play football tonight here in New Orleans. Britt Barefoot will come on for the extra point, and Barefoot knocks it through. It's a 7-7 score. We barely played a couple of minutes. And the offensive line did a great job of, of giving their quarterback, Austin, the opportunity. And, and look at the young man. He's excited. Baptiste ties it at seven. We still got a whole bunch of football left. Well, what a start to this game we have had. <laughs> One minute, 38 seconds elapsed. Four plays from scrimmage. Four flags. This will be the fourth kickoff. We've already had two touchdowns. The quickest score in RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl history, as well as the longest pass in this Bulls history. I think both playbooks will be empty when this ball game is over. <laughs> and Troy hasn't run a play from scrimmage yet. <laughs> Maurice Greer on the return. And Greer in the open. Out to the 50. Pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. The junior from Denver. Making his presence felt. 
And this is just an outstanding job. And I think this speaks to both programs' ability to recruit tremendous athletes. When you put great athletes on the field, Eric, great plays happen. And we've seen some phenomenal plays in the very first part of this first quarter. So fantastic field position for the Troy Trojans as they go on offense for the first time. Here's their quarterback, Levi Brown. And he's done outstanding. Filled in mid-season because of injury, and he's just been a sensational addition for this offense. A walk-on, I may add, but he definitely will earn a scholarship next year. The Sun Belt Conference Newcomer of the Year, Kennard Burton with the grab. Here's Levi Brown. We mentioned he's a walk-on. He's a transfer. Began his college career playing one double-A football or FCS football with the Richmond Spiders. Congratulations, Richmond. They just won the FCS championship a couple of days ago. He played there a couple of years, actually started some games, decided he wanted to try Division 1A football. And there's a fumble on the field. The ball is loose. Who's got it? Looks like Andre Watson of Southern Miss may have the football. Dewan Harris lost it. And now it's anyone's ball. <laughs> That's chaos. <laughs> Southern Miss says they have it, and they do. Now Southern Miss with an opportunity here. Late flag on the field. I think it may have been the guys getting in the mix. And Look at that football. After the play, personal foul, number 91. Correction, number 91. Georgia's 15-yard penalty, first down. That's Dedrick Jones called for the personal foul. And, and how ironic is this? Both offenses on their second play from scrimmage fumble the ball and it's recovered by the opposing defense. And I'm telling you, Eric, one of the hardest plays in football is when that ball gets on the ground trying to recover a fumble. It, it, it's a madhouse <laughs> under, under that pile. So it'll be Southern Miss football. They'll just have to march back 15 yards because of the personal foul against Mr. Jones. The Golden Eagles happy to have the football and take it away from Larry Blakeney's team. Six snaps, two turnovers, two touchdowns. <laughs> Haven't played two and a half minutes. Austin Davis, fresh off his 64-yard touchdown toss, will try it again out of the shotgun. Damian Fletcher, the back next to him in the backfield. Three receivers on the field for the Golden Eagles. They're going to try it again. This time, Davis keeps the football, and he is stoned. Sherrod Martin, among others, making the stop. Close to the line of scrimmage. Time now for tonight's storyline brought to you by K. Jewelers. And, and Eric, for Southern Miss to win this game, they're half to gonna, their defense is going to have to maintain the level of play they played the last four weeks of the season, only giving up an average of 8.8 .8 points per game. And Troy, they're going to get after Austin Davis. This stop unit that Troy has, they're in the top 10 in tackles for losses and sacks. They do an excellent job of putting pressure on the opposing team's quarterback, and they're going to try and do that tonight against Southern Miss. Second and seven, and again, the quarterback calls his own number. Davis charges forward. It'll be about third down and two, maybe three. Davis is a fantastic story himself. Last year at this time, he was part of the baseball program at Southern Miss. Went to Southern Miss thinking he's going to play baseball exclusively. Didn't even go out for the football team. Larry Fedora takes over for longtime head coach Jeff Bauer. Knows what Austin Davis can do at the football field. He says, why don't you come and play football for me? He gives up baseball on the spot, and now he's the starting signal caller in his redshirt freshman year, who throws for the first down, hitting his tight end, Sean Nelson. And anytime you hear freshman and quarterback, it makes you nervous, but he's been outstanding this season. He's thrown 21 touchdowns to only eight interceptions, and has rushed for nine more touchdowns. So he's what you call a dual threat in that position. He can beat you with his feet and his arm. And the thing that the coaching staff at Southern Miss raved about is his poise. They say they feel comfortable when they give him things because he can handle it in game time situations. We're going to see this all evening long. Both quarterbacks are going to sit close 
to that line of scrimmage instead of huddling up. Davis again wants the long ball. A little too strong looking for the big fella, DeAndre Brown. He runs well. It's hard to overthrow DeAndre <laughs> Brown. You know, I asked well, Larry Fedora a question. I said, compare DeAndre Brown to the Oklahoma State wide receiver, Dez Bryant. And he said, DeAndre's faster. And I know Des can run because I watch college football highlights just like everyone else. So DeAndre Brown has blazing speed. And when you add in that he's 6'6", that's such a rare commodity is to have a guy that big who can run that fast. He is an unbelievable player. Now Larry Fedora coached Des Bryant as the offensive coordinator out of Oklahoma State over the last couple of years. And he believes that DeAndre Brown has that type of talent. Davis wants to throw again. This time a strike. Gerald Baptiste, his second catch of the day, and it's another first down for the Golden Eagles. And you see, <laughs> Baptiste is looking to the sideline, telling the coach staff, keep feeding me, keep feeding me. <laughs> but this is a great job of getting up the seam against the cover two by your slot receiver. It didn't allow that underneath defender to prevent him from getting vertical on his pass route. Pickup of 18 yards, pitching catch, Davis to Baptiste. Now a little bit of Damian Fletcher. He gets out close to the midfield strike. Fletcher, a smaller back, just 177 pounds, but he is a workhorse. They like to use him between the tackles, and they use him a lot throughout the course of every game. Averages over 20 carries per game in his three-year college career. Davis going to keep it himself. Gets the first down, out to the 44-yard line. Bear Woods on the stop. And Southern Miss runs the spread attack, which is very new. If you follow Southern Miss during the Jeff Bauer era, a lot of talent with Coach Bowser, a lot of success, but they ran a more traditional offense. So Larry Fedora has brought the faster pace spread offense, and it's been extremely successful. And it's worn teams down. You know, the speed at which they play, you have to really be in condition on defense to, to handle what they're going to present you because they're going to challenge you vertically. They're going to stretch the field horizontally. They're going to force you to make tackles in space. A little bit too strong looking for William Spite in space. Sean, does this offense look familiar to you? It, it should look <laughs> familiar to another team that, that played here on this field. Your Tulane Green Wave team back in the late 90s. Your offensive coordinator was Rich Rodriguez. Larry Fedora said he learned so much from Rich Rodriguez over the years. And he came down and, and sat in a couple meetings that we had, and he, he must have paid attention because they've been extremely successful this year offensively from start to finish at Southern Miss. He said even some of the plays are called the same thing <laughs> as they were when you were the quarterback at Tulane. Pitch out left side. Fletcher stays on his feet and gets out to the 37-yard line. Cameron Sheffield pushed him out of bounds along with Sherrod Martin. Good look at Sherrod Martin. First team all Sun Belt Conference. Fifth year senior. They think he's got a chance to play professionally. Yeah, he's been outstanding. You know, covering the middle of the field for this Troy defense this year. Has four interceptions and 87 tackles. So not only can he come up and support the run, but he's effective back there defending the pass as well. to Fletcher has the first down and then some to the 31 yard line. Fletcher's type of guy that just kind of flies under the radar. He's been good for a long time. And they're all everything tied in. Sean Nelson, who's not in the picture right now, but will be. He makes such a good block on the exterior of that play right there, which allows Damian Fletcher to pick up the yardage necessary to get a first down for the Southern Miss offense. Fletcher's going to get to blow right now. He's on the sideline. Torrey Harrison replaces him in the backfield. They fake to Harrison. Davis wants a punch. DeAndre Brown can't come up with it. Good coverage. Chris Bowens had the task of trying to guard Brown, and Brown is hurt. DeAndre Brown down in the end zone and in obvious pain. Well, 
tough situation right now for DeAndre Brown. Hopefully he's okay. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be right back. Now this is a difficult situation here at uh, the Los Angeles or Louisiana Superdome. DeAndre Brown, the all-everything freshman for the Southern Mississippi, still being attended to in the end zone. We're going to show you what happened. It is very difficult to watch. Feel free to look away for a moment. We're going to show you one more time. Uh, DeAndre Brown on this pass pattern. Now, Sean, he wasn't even hit. He's still down on the field, and I, they got to him immediately on the field, but he is in a lot of pain right now. We can only hope that he is okay because he is a supreme talent. Maybe the biggest recruit that Southern Mississippi has been able to, to get to Hattiesburg in the last 30 years. We are told that they will be taking him to University Hospital right here in New Orleans. And if we have any update at all, we will pass it along. Yes, his teammates very concerned with his well-being right now. Sean, you played on this field. Your college career was played here at the Superdome. Obviously, the field has changed in terms of the field turf. But what is it like to play? here at the Superdome in terms of the actual physical ground underneath you. Well, it's gotten a lot better. You know, the Superdome used to have the artificial turf, but just like a lot of the other stadiums that used to utilize that, they've gone to the field grass, and this is an outstanding surface. That's just a situation that's unfortunate, and it's something that I don't think it really mattered. The surface right then is just one of those things that it's unfortunate, but sometimes it happens, and hopefully, you know, it's something that he can recover from and come back next year you know, after recuperating and rehabilitating over this offseason. Southern Mississippi, they'll try and keep their momentum going. This is the 12th play of this drive. Austin Davis, designed quarterback keeper. He gets out to the 23-yard line. You've been in this situation before, Sean, elite quarterback. A redshirt freshman like Austin Davis, what does he do in the huddle? Does he, does he say anything to the guys to make sure that everyone's back on the same page after watching one of their best players be carted off the field? Well, the fortunate thing for everyone that's in the Southern Miss uniform is they don't have the replay, so they can't actually see the severity of the injury. But they hope that their teammate is okay, but they understand when you know, someone's injured or someone's missing for another reason that someone else has to step up and, and try and help us get a win on that occasion. Davis nowhere to go. Middle linebacker Boris Lee jumps on top of him. It's going to bring up a second down. As the man is going to have to step into the shoes of DeAndre Brown, Freddie Parham, we've already seen him trying to return a couple of kicks. He's going to get the lion's share of the minutes in DeAndre Brown's spot. This is actually a fourth down, fourth down and eight, and the Golden Eagles are going to go for it here. They don't have a great place kicker, and they're just going to try and keep the offense on the field. This would be about a 45-yard field goal. Davis. Bounce pass, looking for Gerald Baptiste. And Troy will take over on down. All right, we're going to step away for a moment. Larry Fedora's team will come back out on defense when we return. Football, the R&L Carriers New Orleans Bowl is brought to you by R&L Carriers, your global transportation provider, and Capital One Card Lab at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Some of the best food in the world, you can find it in New Orleans, and one of the finest places is Emeralds. Emerald Legacy's is flagship restaurant right here in downtown New Orleans. Had a chance to go there last night. Phenomenal. I don't know how you played down here for four years and you didn't gain about 60 pounds in that four-year time period. Because it's hot. 
This is Jarrell Jernigan with the catch, a pickup of seven on first down. Let's take a look at the impact players for the Troy Trojans of the Sun Belt Conference. And running back Dewan Harris has gone over a thousand yards this year. Outstanding runner, counting for 11 touchdowns. Darrell Jernigan, Mr. Everything. He runs it, throws it a little bit, and catches it. And Brandon Lang anchors that defense, who's outstanding at getting after the other team's quarterback. Harris with the carry gets himself a first down. Fresh set it out. Gerald McGrath on the stop. That's a good look at Dewan Harris, just a sophomore. Tackled by Gerald McGrath. And as good as Southern Miss has played the last four games of the season defensively, they're going up against an outstanding offensive unit. You know, Tr Troy has put up points against everyone that they've played this year. Well, went to LSU, put up 31 in Baton Rouge, so they're capable even against the better teams in the country of scoring. On the run, Brown throws a strike to Andrew Davis, who dives to make the grab right at the first down marker. And good job by Levi of being flushed out of the pocket, but he keeps his head downfield, keeps the ball in the position where he can get rid of it quickly in an outstanding catch to finish off the play. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage, give to Dewan Harris, and Harris dives forward across the 45-yard line to the 43. That's the quarterback, Levi Brown, who kept the football. And now Brown is going to lead the game. Going to be a direct snap situation. Harris is the man set to receive the shotgun snap. And Harris keeps it himself. No pretense of throwing the football. And he's going to get close to first down yards. Well, Troy will have some razzle dazzle over the next couple of hours. Their offense is fairly wide open. It's fairly wide open, and they throw the football to everyone. So they're, they're a team, when you watch them on film, if there's a skill position player in the game, you have to cover him because there's a, a, a great chance that he's going to get an opportunity to make a play. Looks like they're going to have to bring the chains across and measure to see if that's enough for the first down. And yeah, we were looking at the stat sheet, Sean, and it's, it's amazing. Troy had 11 different players who had at least 10 catches on the year. And they're going to be about that much short on the first down. Ten catches for 11 different guys. In Eric, total, over 20 guys caught one pass. And Eric, I've been an offensive coordinator before. It's hard enough <laughs> to get two or three guys the ball consistently. Troy finds a way to get 11 guys the ball. They have 11 players that have caught a touchdown. <laughs> 22 with a, at least one grab. That's amazing. So, so what's the motto of this? If you go to Troy <laughs> and you play offensive skill position, you're going to get a chance to play. You'll get a good education and you'll catch the football. Third down and one. That's a tough running right there for Dewan Harris. He's got enough for the first down. Harris, not a big fella, 5'7", 190 pounds. He's not going to run away from too many guys. But he'll get those tough yards. And you need that in the spread. You have to maintain some semblance of balance. Even though you're spreading the opposing defense out, they have to fear the fact that you can run the football and run it effectively. Trojans, champions of the Sun Belt Conference, tied for the conference championship a year ago, but were iced out of a bowl game. Florida Atlantic represented the Sun Belt Conference here in this bowl game a year ago. Your boy Brown just has to throw the football away. There's a flag down on the field. And this is going to be defensive holding as McHale Terry was trying to reroute and change his pattern when Levi Brown started to scramble. He was held by the Southern Miss defensive back. Holding, defense number 20, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, Larry Fedora doesn't agree, but C.J. Bailey called for the hold. And it was the correct call. It's actually a good call. 
by C.J. Bailey because if he doesn't hold him, it's going to be a touchdown for Troy. So sometimes the defensive coordinator grab him. <laughs> you don't let him run free down the sideline, and you don't really get on the cornerback for that play. An interesting thing about Troy's offense is even though they're in the shotgun, Dewan Harris lines up behind Levi Brown. Brown steps up for the pressure. Kind of floated in a little gap. Incomplete. Kennard Burton, the intended target, but the pass a little bit too high. Yeah, they call that formation the pistol formation, where it's kind of a shorter shotgun setup. And this is always a tough throw for a right-handed quarterback when you're rolling out of the pocket to your left. You're forced to throw back across your body. But Southern Miss right now is doing an outstanding job of taking away Troy's first and second option in their passing game right now. Forcing Levi to hold the football and try and get outside the pocket and make plays. That was discombobulated from the jump. Dead ball, false start. Offense, number 21. Five-yard penalty. It remains second down. First penalty against Larry Blakeney's club. Austin Silvoy into the game in the right slot. Five receivers for Levi Brown to choose. Pass is caught. Gerald Tate still on his feet. And Tate sniffing the end zone. Down at the two-yard line. There's a flag on the play, but that was a dynamic run for Tate. Pickup of 33 yards if it stands. Offside defense, number 93. Penalties declined, first down. And Eric, this is a great job by Levi Brown of understanding that he had a free play and then knowing that he could be aggressive and go down the field. I want you to look at the accuracy of this throw. This is when you call about putting the ball right on the money. It's in a place not only where the receiver can catch it, but if there's going to be a bang-bang collision, he puts it in the spot where he can catch it and get down. But Tate is such a tremendous athlete. He said, I'm not going down. I'm trying to score. Because I know in this offense, I may not get another ball <laughs> <laughs> for a couple plays. Speed sweep right side. No chance. That play loses yards. And Art Burton with the carry. A lot of times they run that speed sweep to Jarrell Jernigan. This time they tried Burton. But all over that play was the safety Eddie Hicks. You know, one of the things that stands out about the Troy offense, they have a lot of interchangeable parts. They have a lot of players who are extremely gifted athletes who they try and get the football in space and they can do magnificent things with it when they get it. Good defense played Andre Watson. Johnny on the spot. Thought he should have had a pick. And that was close to going on Andre Watson's highlight film once he leaves Southern Miss because if he could have just grasped his football, there was nothing between him and the end zone but grass. Well, Eric, like I always tell you, defensive backs are always wide receivers who couldn't catch, so they're going to have to go <laughs> on the other side of the ball. Third down and goal. Again, five receivers in the game for Brown. Open back of the end zone. Incomplete. Burton couldn't stay in. He says he did. He wants to take another look at that one. And this is going to be close. Wow. Did he drag the left foot? I, I think it will get overturned. I think it will be called a touchdown. Outstanding catch. They're going to take another look at it. The back judge was right there. He was three feet away, perfect position. But he was the one who said that he was not in bounds. We'll have an official review here just to ascertain what happened. And, and Kennard Burton, I mean, that's outstanding. They have the wherewithal to not only go up and try and catch the football, but to know that there's a chance that I can get this left leg down, this left toe, as it, it's going to be down the end zone. This is an outstanding job of concentration really by the young man. Possession by the receiver in the end zone. Touchdown. All right. That was quick. Kennard Burton give him a touchdown, his first of the season. 
comes in a bowl game. And that's a good job by the officiating crew of getting together and making the correct call because the young man definitely dragged his foot and had control and possession of the football. So, just like that, it is a 14-7 lead for the Troy Trojans. Trojans feeling good about themselves here in New Orleans. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. The RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl, the eighth running of this great event. Freddie Parham on the return for Southern Miss, and Parham out to the 30 yard line. Southern Miss take over the football, their last time they had it. They chewed up 14 plays, but stalled on the 28 yard line, and that led to the Troy touchdown drive. 11 plays, 72 yards, capped off with a Kennard Burton four yard touchdown catch, his first touchdown of the season. And it was an impressive one. And one of the things I'm interested in watching is now that this Southern Miss offense does not have DeAndre, DeAndre Brown for the rest of the game, what kind of adjustments do they make? Because he's such a big part of what they do offensively. Can someone else step, can someone else step up and fill that gap? Damian Fletcher does a little twirly bird. Picks up three yards on first down. DeAndre Brown, they're all everything freshmen. Landing awkwardly. Last drive for Southern Miss. He's been taken to University Hospital here in New Orleans. We will try and get an update on his condition if one is possible. Southern Mississippi, 6-6 six and six on the year. Needing a win today to have yet another winning season. They've had 14 straight winning seasons, trying to make it 15 straight winning seasons. Almost a heck of a one-handed grab by Jodrick Morris. But the ball drops and we have a flag on the field. This is a Pac-10 officiating crew led by Larry Farina, our referee. And this is going to be defensive pass interference when the football was in the air. There was contact, I think. Pass interference, defense number 14. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And, and once the ball is in the air, you can't have contact. And, and it's not much, but it's just enough to, to force the pass to be incomplete. So it's the correct call. So Jorick Calvin called for the foul while trying to guard. Jodrick Morris, Jork and Jodrick. And this is a ball hawking secondary from Troy. This secondary has 16 interceptions as a group this year, so they really get after the football when it's in the air. Fletcher, pick up a one. Maybe. Maurice Coleman met him along with Terrence Moore. And there is Bear Woods. He's not your average Bear. You like the face paint? I, mean, I didn't do the face paint, but it doesn't look bad on Bear. Oh. And it fits. Now, there's a reason why he's got those uh, those long locks. He was planning, he's done it before, on having growing his hair and then cutting it off and donating it for Locks for Love, which is a fantastic organization that gives hair to people who need to have hair. A lot of times cancer patients have a chance to have wigs made from hair that's donated. He did that before in the past, trying to do it again now. May not work. His hair is kind of clumped together. He's got the dreadlocks going, but that was the intention originally with the long hair for Bear Woods. He, he definitely has a lot of it. Now that face paint, that's like a Ray Bentley look. When Ray <laughs> Bentley, one of our colleagues, played for the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> but Bear backs up his appearance with his performance, though. 104 tackles this year, and he's been an outstanding player in the middle of that Troy defense. Third down now. Here comes the blitz. Davis notices, fires, and completes. This time, Jodrick Morris hangs on to the football, and it's a first down for the Golden Eagles. And this is an outstanding catch by Jodrick Morris of snatching the football out of the air. You know, you talk about a receiver being aggressive when the ball's in the air. That's what an example of what that means, going and getting the football. 
And quickly back to the line. Pass incomplete. Looking right side. Nothing doing for Austin Davis. And a lot of teams that run the spread talk about they have different tempos, like they have a fast tempo. But a lot of teams get to the line of scrimmage every play and then look to the sideline and get the play. Southern Miss has a fast tempo. They're at the line of scrimmage, and they're running plays. They put pressure on the defense to line themselves correctly every snap. This is different than what we saw for so many years when Jeff Bauer was the head coach in Hattiesburg. And Davis gets inside the 30, close to the 27-yard line, close to a first down. That's a real dangerous weapon that they have on Austin Davis with how he uses his feet so well. They're going to say he's short. They're going to get to the line quickly. And just power forward on the sneak. And that's going to be another first down for the Golden Eagles. That'll do it for the first quarter of play in the eighth edition of the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. We have had a lot of excitement thus far. The Troy Trojans on top of Southern Mississippi, 14 to 7, but Southern Miss knocking on the door when we come back. The 2009 Rose Bowl game. Tonight's ESPN College Football is presented in high definition, live and in color. Now how about that for a first quarter of play from the Louisiana Superdome? 15 minutes of play, 21 points, no punts. Eric, I think this is coming from your blimp. Don't you have a blimp that's <laughs> rotating around? You're Mr. Superdome. New Orleans, man. It's all about you. It's following you wherever you go this weekend. <laughs> Southern Mississippi with the football, trying to answer the score by the Troy Trojans just a moment ago. First down and 10. Ball just outside the 26-yard line. Davis wants to throw. Bullet is caught. I don't know. It's caught. It's a clear catch. William Spike with just his second catch of the season. And it's amazing the comfort level that Austin Davis has in this offense considering that he did come to Southern Miss as a baseball player, not even having the intentions to play football. Has been able to come out this year and, and do an outstanding job. Has even surprised Coach Fedora, who knew that the kid could play, but he wasn't sure he could handle game situations, and he's proven to be more than capable of doing that. Pickup of 18 down to the 8-yard line. This is Fletcher. And Fletcher looking for the corner. Finds it. Let's Touchdown, go. Southern Miss. What a little back he is. Damian Fletcher, his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. An outstanding job, Eric, not only of getting to the edge, but being able to turn the corner. A lot of backs get there and go out of bounds, not deflects. The pride of Biloxi, Mississippi, makes it a one-point game. And now Britt Barefoot makes it a tie game. Heck of a start to this one. Southern Mississippi and the Troy University Trojans going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The most recent blow delivered by Damian Fletcher. Welcome back, everyone. One of the finest uh, music playing places in the world. New Orleans, Louisiana. I know a thing or two about carrying a tune. Known for food and fun. A little bit of jazz, too. Is that part of the fun? Great music. Yeah. You loved your time here at Tulane, didn't you? Outstanding university that I attended in Tulane. Outstanding people. You know, the people in New Orleans don't get a lot of credit, but there's some great people. They call this place home. And you're still remembered. It's been 10 years, but you can't walk the streets. It takes a little too long. If I'm walking with you down the streets in New Orleans, everyone wants to grab your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Make me feel good. It's a nice place to be for a couple of days. All right, on the return, this is Jorick Calvin. And Calvin with a full head of steam. He's pushed backwards, stays on his feet, and he's down at about the 16-yard line. Well, earlier in this ball game, back in the first quarter, just a difficult situation. The star receiver for Southern Mississippi, DeAndre Brown, having to leave the field. We do have an update 
He is currently at University Hospital here in New Orleans. He has suffered a lower leg fracture. Uh, he's being tended to right now. We can only hope that uh, it is not exceedingly severe. And that he's back playing football sooner rather than later because he is an exceedingly talented football player that has a bright future in this game. It's such a joy to watch. And, and I definitely enjoyed preparing for this game because I got an opportunity to see him play. And you, know, you just definitely hope that he can recover and come back next year 100%. Remember, folks, he's 6'6", 230 pounds, runs a 4'5", 40. The biggest recruit at Southern Mississippi in a long time. He's got a lot of good football ahead of him. On first down, the catch is made in space out across the 35-yard line. And our Burton with the grab. Burton's had a good start to today's game. Pickup of 17 yards. Dewan Harris tries the left side, nowhere to go. This is going to be a big time loss. A loss of four yards back to the 31 yard line. That's time now for tonight's AFLAC trivia question. Today's AFLAC trivia question, in case you're wondering. Here it comes. I love that thing. <laughs> what four bowl teams were at one point four games under 500 this season? Wow, four games under 500. That's a lot. And having to rally to become bowl eligible. All right, we'll have the answer in a little bit. I know one of them. Levi Brown airs it out. Too strong. Looking for Jernigan. Incomplete. It'll bring up third down. And another Southern Miss player is down on the field in pain. That's C.J. Bailey. Bailey, one of the starting corners. That's a friendly fire, Sean. He was hit by his own guy. Now another timeout on the field as another Southern Mississippi player being attended to. We'll take a timeout and come back in a moment. C.J. Bailey, one of the starting cornerbacks for Southern Miss, being looked at by the training staff of the Golden Eagles. He limped off the field just moments ago, and you need as many defensive backs as possible when you go against an offense like Detroit Trojans. Hopefully we'll see him back on the field. Yes, you do. Offensively, Troy definitely applies pressure. They force you down in and down out, just like Southern Miss does, to be in the right spot at the right time and make the play. Otherwise, it would be a big play for the off 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 other offense. Levi Brown makes the first man miss, trying to keep the play alive. Oh, man. Still on his feet. He's got tons of room. But wants to throw it. No one's open. And it's a loss of a yard. After all that, he loses a yard. <laughs> now, Eric, in practice, you work on the scramble drill. That's when the quarterback starts to scramble one way. You adjust the route that you're running. But I'm not sure anybody in America works on the... Almost sack, not a sack, scramble drill, reverse, back across the field, scramble drill. And if you leave our Brown, you're just glad it was third down, so at least you get to go to the sideline and catch your breath. For a one-yard loss, that may have taken the longest period of time ever in the history of college football. Will Goggins on to punt it away, averaging 38 yards per boot. Low skimmer. Andre Watson jumps away from it, and it's going to be down inside the 30-yard line at the 27. Actually, it never was down, just rolled to a stop at the 27, and that's where Southern Miss will take over. Time now for the answer for today's athletic trivia question. Which four bowl teams were at 1.4 games below 500? How many do you have, Sean? I, I know Southern Miss is one. I think we got Rutgers. Rutgers. I think North Carolina State. I don't know if we know the fourth. Florida, Florida Atlantic. Atlantic. Ah, and I knew that because they had such a tough early season schedule. Florida Atlantic also from the Sun Belt Conference. They played in this RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl a year ago. First 
down Southern Mississippi. He scored a touchdown last time with the football. Austin Davis. Got to be careful with that football. He hangs on and he's down at the 31-yard line. Middle backer Boris Lee on the tackle along with Cameron Sheffield. There's a good shot of Boris Lee, number two. Justin Jr. has led the team in tackles each of the last two seasons. Big-time leader. They love the way that he barks out his command in the middle of that field before every play. And when you have 113 tackles, two and a half sacks, and two interceptions, you're able to give orders because of some authority comes with it because those guys watch the tape every week after the game, too, and they know that you're a playmaker. And he may be the best football player in the country with the name of Boris. I, I would agree. I don't think he has much competition. <laughs> On second down, Davis. He is tough to bring down. Quarterback is going to get out close to the first down marker. Steve McClendon on the stop. And I'm extremely impressed with Southern Miss quarterback Austin Davis. Watching him on field, you can film, you can tell that he's a good athlete. But seeing him in person, I'm even more impressed with his athleticism. You know, when you have a young man at quarterback who can beat you with his arm and with his feet, it presents so many problems for the defense. Now he gets it up for the first down, so a fresh set of downs for the Golden Eagles. Torrey Harrison in the backfield next to him. And they give to Harrison. Lowers the head. Brought down by Boris Lee. There's that man again. Great story about Boris Lee. Last year, he started every game as the middle backer for Troy but had terrible tonsil pain. He had inflamed tonsils for the majority of the season, couldn't eat much, actually lost close to 30 pounds, was weighing about 195 pounds during the middle of last season, but he still played, had surgery at the end of the year to correct the situation. Now he's back up to his regular fighting weight. But he lost 30 pounds and still was a middle linebacker in FBS football. <laughs> Good run, Harrison still on his feet, out to the 40-yard line. It's tough. And Eric, this is two great examples of what a spread offense does to your defense. They just put you in so many one-on-one. -on -one. You see right there, the running back's in the hole. Somebody's forced in a one-on-one -on -one situation to make the tackle. When you don't make the tackle, because the, the, the offensive formation spread that defense out, they're going to be big plays. These two teams have tremendous athletes and to go along with the spread offense. That's why they've been so successful. So they missed second half of the season, Troy for the duration of the season. I mean, if you don't think, if you don't think that Troy has athletes, ask LSU. So they, oh. they met 31-3 in the third quarter. Another carry for Harrison. This time not quite as successful. Just two yards on that scamper. Yeah, that would have been a huge big time upset. Troy traveling to Baton Rouge. They were up 31 to 3 on LSU. Couldn't close the door. They definitely had Tiger Nation worried late in that football game. And Southern Miss, this is Coach Fedora's first campaign as the head coach, who'll continue to get more players that fit this spread system, and they'll continue to get better. Yeah, Coach Fedora's got a plan. They had a chance to talk to him. He thinks he's got it figured out. Flag down on the field. Davis trying to make something happen with his legs. Hit hard after a pickup of eight. Boris Lee got to him. And now it's Boris Lee who was down on the field in pain. See the quarterback delivering a blow right there. We're going to talk this one over. Boris Lee still down on the field. Illegal formation, offense, five yard penalty, replay second down. And as we watch what happened to Boris Lee, he actually gets hit by his own player. I thought maybe Austin Davis had gave a little hit but the one thing that Austin Davis will learn he, he's a freshman so he doesn't quite understand it yet one of the true attributes of a great runner is knowing how to get tackled oh there's actually a strategy there there is definitely a strategy when you're going to get tackled it may sound funny but you cannot just consistently be in vicious collisions and have any kind of longevity 
Is that something that people get taught or you just kind of learn it? You learn it after you take a couple of those shots. Davis under duress throws it away. Did have a man in the vicinity. So no flag down on the field. Way through the second quarter, the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. This is the eighth edition of this event. Champions of the Sun Belt Conference, Troy taking on Southern Miss out of Conference USA. The former Conference USA great Sean King. I'm Eric Collins. We have had 28 points scored thus far. And right now, Southern Miss up against it. Third and a bunch. Call it third and 13. They need to get to the 30 yard line to stay on the field. Davis. Throws an intentional bounce pass. Nothing doing on that play. And it's going to bring on the punt team, you would assume, with a 4th and 13. And, Eric, you know, we went to the walkthrough yesterday. It, it a, a very unique experience for me. I, I attended Tulane, and Southern Miss was definitely one of our rivals. They were a team that we didn't like much. They did not like us. It was very interesting for me to see Southern Miss utilizing the Tulane facility. <laughs> And look at this, they're going to utilize all four downs here. Larry Fedora's team, they're not going to punt the football. They're going to go for it on fourth and 13. It looks as if that's going to happen. And a little pooch kick. And it's going to be returned. How about this? Open field. Tavares Williams gets the ball out to the 40-yard line. Ryan McKee, the tackle, makes the top, but not before a good Return there gets the ball out to the 40 yard line for the Troy Trojans. Time to catch our breath. We'll be back in New Orleans in a moment. Troy will have the football. ESPN College Football, the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl is brought to you by RNL Carriers, your global transportation provider, and Mercedes Benz, located on the web at NBUSA.com. Good turnout last night for the uh, Miracle on Fulton Street uh, experience. Fans from both teams welcome to go. And since the, both these schools located not too far away from New Orleans, good participation the entire week. Troy, Alabama, about four hours away from New Orleans. Hattiesburg just up the road, less than two hours away from New Orleans. So easy to get to this facility and the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl this year for both programs. Levi Brown on first down. Once again, running around. This time he finds a man, Dewan Harris. Struggles out to the 48 yard line. Now, in case you're wondering exactly where these two programs located, this is our Google map of Troy, Alabama. It's about 40 miles south of Montgomery uh, in southeastern Alabama. And there is Hattiesburg, Mississippi. If you're ever in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, you can get yourself a good meal. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Some of the best barbecue I've ever had in my life came in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. It's worth the trip. First down and then some. Dewan Harris on the carry. That was one of those formations we knew we were going to see. They had Jarrell Jernigan line up in the Wildcat formation and take the direct snap from center for Troy. And the University of Arkansas, when they last year put Darren McFadden and Felix Jones in the backfield together, a lot of teams have gone to that. You see it in the NFL now, and teams around the college football landscape are also utilizing two running back sets with no quarterback in the backfield. Is it here to stay or is it just a fact? I think it's here to stay. Levi Brown back into the game, throws on the run. It's a strike. All the way down, close to the 30-yard line on the grab is Fred Turner. And again, they're changing personnel. Levi Brown runs to the sideline. It looks as if this is going to be Jarrell Jernigan taking the direct snap. He's number three for who's Troy. A, who's their all-everything player who we haven't heard a lot of from tonight. So I knew this guy, they're going to try and get him involved in this offense. Here's Jernigan, fumbles the football briefly, corrals it, and gets out, out to the 26-yard line, maybe the 25. 
101 Bowl Week rolls on Tuesday night on ESPN with two highly ranked teams facing off in the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Boise State, the number nine team, taking on 11th ranked TCU. The Horn Frogs having a fantastic season. The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, part of Capital Bowl Week on ESPN Tuesday night at 8 Eastern Time. Boise State still has yet to lose in 2008. Juggling catch is not made. Gerald Tate couldn't control it before going out of bounds. Three good ones coming your way this week. Just talked about the game between Boise State and TCU. The Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. How about Notre Dame? Trying to get it done against Hawaii and then the Motor City Bowl. Another Sun Belt Conference team, Ford Atlantic, taking on the Chippewas of Central Michigan. And that'll be interesting that Hawaii Bowl. Because I know when I'm going to Hawaii, it's tough to focus and concentrate when I'm playing football. Well, Notre Dame hasn't won a bowl game in a long time. I think they're going to be focused. They should hope they do. Third down and five. Strike. Gerald Tate with that grab. Couldn't catch the last one. This time he holds on, and it's a fresh set of downs for the Trojans. The thing that I like about both offenses, and we're watching Troy right now, is they utilize the whole field. You know, in college, the hash marks are a lot wider than in the National Football League, so it's a lot more field to cover when you're on one of the hash marks. And both offenses, they force you to cover sideline to sideline. Zone, a little bit too strong. Looking for Patrick Cherry. And Levi I wishes he had that pass back just a little too far because Cherry had done a good job of getting vertical on that safety and going to the corner, and he was open for the touchdown. This is hard to believe, folks, but Levi Brown actually played a JV game this year against Georgia Military. <laughs> a starting quarterback in a bowl game played a JV football game against the team of Georgia Military. Still not on scholarship. He's considered a walk-on. He's a transfer from Richmond. Jarrell Jernigan with the grab. Uh, it's depend on the mark. Looks like he's going to be just a whisker short. And it'll be interesting quarterback competition this spring at, at Troy University. You know, they had two of their other quarterbacks get injured early in the year, so it'll be very interesting. Quick snap on third down and one, and they get the first down and then a bunch more. Xavier Moreland, who's playing with a, a broken collarbone, gets the first down inside the five. That can't be fun. Broken collarbone? It doesn't sound fun. And just use Moreland for one play. He goes to the sideline. Xavier said, I'm a senior. It's the last opportunity I'm going to have to put this Troy uniform on. Nothing's going to keep me on the sideline. I'm going to be out there on the field with my teammates. Fumble. Ball loose. Did Dewan Harris recover his own fumble? Yes, he did. That was almost disastrous for the Trojans. And we've seen quite a few footballs. On, on the ground today. And this just looks like a bad exchange between DeWan and the quarterback. You know, sometimes that happens here because Levi is looking at the defensive end to see if he should keep the football. And I think he just overshot the handoff a little. Jernigan's going to take the direct snap again. And Jernigan is hammered to the ground. Rashad Bird. And Eddie Hicks on the stop. That'll bring up third down. And Eric, it's contact going on out on the field tonight. We got guys are flying around, and they have bad intentions when they get there. You definitely want to make sure your chin strap is all the way buttoned up and your mouthpiece is in. Look at this. Ball's in the three-yard line. Troy spread it out. Five receivers in the game. Round with time. Oh, he's in trouble. Back of the end zone, incomplete. 
Good defense played by the safety Justin Wilson to knock the pass away and it'll bring up fourth down. And, and Eric, this has just got to be like Chinese checkers. You see, <laughs> Troy has a wide receiver all the way to the left side of the field, all the way to the right, and as Levi's running around, he's looking for someone, but Southern Miss has been stout. Defensively, you think about how successful Troy has been. They only have 14 points, and it's almost halftime. So Southern Miss defense has continued the momentum that they brought into this game. Sam Glussman. Field goal is good, and the Trojans regain the lead. Troy Trojans march down the field, have to settle for three, but they'll take the lead. We'll be back. the season finale of Monday Night Football. Brian Urlacher and the Bears fight to keep their playoff hopes alive. But a familiar foe stands in their way. And the Packers play spoiler to their longtime rival. It's Packers-Bears tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Welcome back, everyone. Troy Trojans. They're all fired up. This is their third bowl appearance. I think they're here to support Bear. They have the same face paint. Yeah. Whip kick is covered. It'll be a ball on the 35-yard line for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. And I am impressed so far. It was obviously a devastating situation. With one of the best players offensively for Southern Miss, DeAndre Brown, had to leave with an injury. It looks right now as if Southern Miss is still in this game mentally. Well, they're extremely well coached. Larry Fedora, first year head coach of Southern Miss, has done an outstanding job. And offensive coordinator, Miss Coach Wyatt, he's done a great job of, you know, making the adjustments necessary when you, you lose your marquee player offensively. I mean, being able to find a way to keep the rhythm of the offense going and still be consistent in moving the football is difficult sometimes when you don't have all your pieces. Couple of fakes for Austin Davis. Gets it out, Damian Fletcher. And Fletcher gets out to the 43-yard line. Well, one of the, one of the things that, uh, that Southern Miss has going forward is the fact that Larry Fedora has come in and he has changed things around. He wanted to have a fast-paced, open offense, which is something they don't see a lot among the, among the schools in Mississippi. Uh, and definitely, and very traditional history offensively with the Mississippi schools. You think Mississippi State, Ole Miss, like traditional offenses. Even when Eli Manning was at Ole Miss, it was more of a true, pure drop-back type of offense. Well, Larry Fedora is bringing an up-tempo, fast-paced, spread offense to the state. And Southern Miss has done a great job the first year running. That is one of the reasons why they're able to attract recruits like DeAndre Brown. DeAndre Brown said, you know what, I'm interested in going to this program now because it's the only team in the state that's going to give me a chance to shine as a wide receiver. Good play call there. Damian Fletcher barrels out across the 35 to the 34-yard line. And when you're a skill position player, Eric, if you're a running back in high school right now, you know that you can come to a university and get an opportunity in the open field to have the football on a consistent basis like Damian Fletcher has right there. That has to excite you. You have to want to go somewhere where they're going to allow you to utilize your ability. And Southern Miss and Troy both have offenses and defenses that allow you to do that. A couple of handoffs. Looks like we're going to have a pass from Baptiste. Open man. Caught inside the five a flag is down it's Jodrick Morse with the grab will it stand up and I think it's going to be holding on the defense pass interference offense number 83 oh. 15 yard penalty Replay first down. That's how he got so open. And I'm interested to see this replay because from my vantage point, it looked as though the defensive back was the one instigating the contact. I think Coach Fedora agrees. <laughs> it's about as animated as you're ever going to see a head coach. And as we look at it, it's going to incur at the top of the screen. And you see, it looks as though the defender instigates the contact. I'm, I'm not sure what the official actually saw, but I don't, I don't agree with that call. Either does Coach Fedora. 
<laughs> Delayed handoff to Fletcher, trying to get some back on a first and 25 out to the 43-yard line. Well, in case you were wondering if Coach Fedora came here for the cuisine and the jazz, that's not the only reason he came to town. He's interested in winning a football game. And he has a football team that's very young and a football team that he's excited about coaching. On second and 19, Davis throws a strike. Freddie Parham with the grab out close to the first down marker. It's going to bring up a third down and short. You know, Eric coaches stay a real late at night drawing up those trick plays. <laughs> and when they get the opportunity to use them in games, they don't want anything to go wrong. Southern Miss still with two timeouts. Coming up in a half, half minute to play here in the first half. And they run the football to get the first down. Fletcher's down to the 20-yard line. And you'd assume they'd call a timeout here. And they do. This could be a factor, Sean. Remember, Southern Mississippi forfeited a timeout at the beginning of the game because of fashion. They <laughs> wanted to wear the gold jerseys instead of the, the assigned whites. And so they began the game with just two timeouts instead of the, the normally allotted three. Well, so Eric, now they only have one more timeout to play with. Well, Eric, you can't ever get mad for a man being comfortable in his workplace. They were more comfortable with the gold-on-gold gold uniforms. And they were willing to sacrifice a timeout to be comfortable. You can't argue with that. <laughs> yeah. It'll be interesting to see if it costs them anything. I like the look. I like the gold on gold. It looks pretty jazzy to me. How does a guy with the last name of Fedora be known for wearing a visor? Shouldn't he wear a fedora? <laughs> Wouldn't that make a little bit more sense to you? We're indoors. He's still wearing a visor, so it's obviously important to him to have the visor on at all times. I, I, I think it's tougher to put the headset on with the fedora than what it is hard. with a visor. Now, something to keep in mind as well. Southern Mississippi, they don't want to have to settle for a field goal attempt. They have not been particularly successful this year with field goals. Their kicker, Britt Barefoot, his longest on the campaign is just 29 yards. So they'd like to get a touchdown here. And he has a great name for a kicker. Yeah. <laughs> Britt Barefoot. But he kicks with a shoe on. <laughs> There's some consistency problems in Hattiesburg. On first down, out in the flat, catch is made by Parr. Gets out of bounds, that'll stop the clock. There's Barefoot with the shoe. Like the first time in high school that you go to the football field, the first day of practice, and coach goes on a roll call and it's Britt Barefoot, you're probably going to try and kick a couple footballs. I wonder if he's even tried to do it without a shoe. It hurts. Second down, let's see if they go to the tight end, Sean Nelson. Nope, they flip it out to Fletcher, and he's greeted rudely by Bear Woods. Nine seconds remain in the first half. And Southern Mississippi uses their last time out. That means they can no longer use the middle of the field. And I like the timeout. Because now you, you pull Austin to the side, you pull your quarterback over, and, and you explain to the young man, it, it's third down. We can't throw the ball in the middle of the field, so this is the play we're going to call. If it's there, throw it. If it's not, throw it away. We'll attempt the field goal, try and go in the half tied up. Nine seconds remaining here in the first half. Just a reminder, Capital One Bowl Week continues Wednesday night on ESPN with the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. Hawaii taking on Notre Dame. The Sheridan Hawaii Bowl is part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Wednesday night at 8 Eastern time. Notre Dame, same record as Southern Mississippi. Six up, six down. Charlie Weiss trying to get his bunch above 500. All right, third down and 11. What's the call here, Sean? Well, I think you try and get a one-on-one -on -one situation outside and you receive a chance to make a play. Or you try and hit one of the seams down the field. And if it's not there, you tell Austin you throw it out the back of the end zone. No timeouts remaining for the Golden Eagles. To the end zone, nobody home. 
too strong looking for Jodrick Morris. And that'll bring on the field goal unit. And that's a good job by the, the young man at quarterback. You like a kid who's coachable, and he didn't like what he saw, so rather than force it and, and get a turnover, he threw the ball out of bounds and allowed your kicker barefoot to come in and try to sit the game in the halftime. Tied up. All right, this is going to be a 38-yard field goal. His long on the year is 29. Plenty of leg. Oh, my, where you been all season, Chris Barefoot? <laughs> That'll do it for the first half of play. Larry Fedora's bunch tied with the Detroit Trojans. It is a 17-17 score here at intermission of the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. All right, now let's send you to the studio where Kevin Nagandi is standing by. All right, thank you, Eric and Sean. We have a very good pitch out ball is taken away. A touchdown. Ready for the third quarter of play. Welcome back, everyone, to ESPN College Football, the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. After 30 minutes of play, nothing has been decided. It's a 17-17 tie, Southern Miss and Troy. With my partner Sean King, I'm Eric Collins. It was a crazy first quarter of play, back and forth, a lot of offense. Things started to settle down in the second quarter, and we got an even game. A very even game, and the play of both quarterbacks has been outstanding. But both defenses, I think, who've gone a little under the radar have played an outstanding game. You may not think it because they've given up 17 points, but they've been able to negate two high-powered offenses and force them into putting together long drives. Yeah, it was a crazy way to begin this game. First quarter, second play of the game from scrimmage. Southern Mississippi trying to get just a simple pitch out. The ball is poked away by Calvin, runs in, gets himself a touchdown. And then a flea flicker, Sean. How about this way to get on the board for Southern Miss? Hey, both playbooks are empty. They've used everything available. But I mean outstanding play calling by offensive coordinator Wyatt from Southern Mississippi. So Larry Blakeney's bunch trying to win this uh, New Orleans Bowl. They played in this New Orleans Bowl a couple of years ago. Got it done. That was uh, in a game in 2006 against Rice, Larry Fedora's team. They have won this RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl before. They played it in 2004 and 2005, winning both times from representatives of the Sun Belt. First against North Texas, then against Arkansas State. All right, we're off and running, maybe not so much. We're off and holding. Reese Greer just takes a knee down. And the Troy Trojans will take the ball in the 20-yard line. Levi Brown rate his performance in the first 30 minutes of play. I think he's been consistent. I, I think he's going up against a very formidable defense as his Southern Miss defense has only given up eight points a game over the last four games of the season. He's done a good job. He's taking care. He's taking care of the football. He did a good job of mixing the ball around, trying to maximize all the athletes that he has on offense by getting each one of them a touch. Did a good job of that in the first half. One of the things I like to look for the first two drives of the second half is who was able to make the halftime adjustments to come out and negate some of the things that the other team did well in the first half. Five receivers in the route looking for Jarrell Jernigan incomplete. <laughs> Jernigan was fairly quiet in the first half just a pair of receptions. He is the guy that is really special. First team all Sun Belt Conference. Leading the team on the year with 70 catches now. Missed a couple of games, but now full strength. Just a sophomore, a lot of football in his future ahead of him. Juan Harris gets the carry on second down and 10. Powers his way to the 23rd yard line. Let's take a look at the stats of the first two quarters of play. What jumps off the screen at you, Sean? Well, I think when you look at the discrepancy in rushing yards, you know, Southern Miss has been extremely effective running the football. Troy has not been that effective running the football. Although the score is the same, I think for Troy to pull away, they have to find a little more balance offensively. And Southern Miss kind of has to continue to do what they're doing and do a little better job on third down. Haven't been as effective in the first half on third down as I'm sure Coach Fedora would like. Third down situation for Troy. Brown with time. Throws a strike. There's Jernigan with the catch. His third of the day. And it's a first down for the Trojans. Oh, yeah. 
And Levi Bryant has been extremely accurate with the football. You know, I watched him in warm-ups, and he can really spin it. You know, when you hear it, when I say that about a guy, it means every ball comes out, it's a smile, it's pretty to look at, and he puts it in a location that's easy to catch. Another strike catch is made. Justin Bray with the grab. His first catch on the night. Way to make me look good, Levi, right on cue. Uh -huh. I, when, I'm, when I watch him in warm-ups, I mean, he's very accurate with the football, has a strong arm, but doesn't try and overthrow the, the uh, football, but just does just enough to get it there and get it there so his receiver can catch it and, and create something after the catch. Harris with the carry. He's going to be short of the first down. It's going to bring up third down and one. Harris, a thousand yard rusher in his second season with the Trojans, coming into the game with 1,025 yards. Now, quickly to the line of scrimmage, they run a play trying to get Southern Mississippi when they're not settled, and it works. Harris gets enough for the first down. A lot of different tempos to this offense. Kind of gave Southern Miss a little of their own medicine. One of the reasons that Southern Miss has been successful in third and short is because they have run up and ran some quarterback sneaks and some quick running plays. And Troy has taken what Southern Miss has done and used it against them in that instance and pick up a first down. On first down, five receivers in the game, empty backfield with Brown out of the shotgun. Pump fake, nowhere to go. Loss of four yards. One of the things we have not seen in this ball game is tremendous pressure on the quarterback. And Troy was known for it coming into the game. They rank in the top ten in both tackles for losses and sacks. Southern Miss has done a better job of it over the last quarter of the season. But so far, both quarterbacks have done a good job of getting rid of the football and eluding the rush. That sack credited to Terrence Pope, two freshmen from Batesville, Mississippi. field maybe a free play for Troy Brown trying to take advantage throws an absolute laser beam that Jernigan corrals look like Cordero Law may have jumped off sides defensively for Southern Miss offside defense penalties decline first down it was Cordero Law Now you would imagine that the Troy Trojans would be ready for a game against Southern Mississippi. They have taken on some of the best teams in the country over the last couple of years. Take a look at that schedule. Last year, Arkansas, Florida, Oklahoma State they actually won that game, and Georgia in non-conference play. This year, doing a death march as well, going to Columbus and taking on Ohio State, taking on LSU in Baton Rouge, going and taking on Oklahoma State out in Stillwater in a revenge game. That's a tough non-conference schedule. You look at their record, they're 8-4, and four, but you can really excuse three of those losses because not many teams are going to win against Ohio State, Oklahoma State, and LSU on a year-to-year -year basis. And, and, and it's interesting. A lot of people may not, you know, when you say Troy, understand the quality of players that they've had at this university and that they have right now. I mean, they have some tremendous athletes have come through this program, and when you watch them play now, you can tell that they have guys on the football field who can play at those schools, and when they compete against those universities, you see because they're extremely competitive. And I know they haven't gotten the wins that they'd like against them, but you think this year they had LSU down 31-3. to Last year they had beat Oklahoma State. So they have a team that's more than capable of competing at that level. And Larry Blakeney says it helps to recruit when you can say, we're going to play the best teams out there in 1A football. We're going to go to Columbus and play the Buckeyes. We're going to go to the Swamp and play Florida. We're going to play Baton Rouge. And we're going to go to the Baton Rouge and take on LSU. Elite players want to do that. And that's how he's got Marcus Ware to come and play for him. O.C. Manure to come and play for him. Third down and 12. We'll pitch out to Jernigan. Nowhere close to first down yards. Makes it back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's it. With that type of play call in third and 12 makes you wonder if they're going to go for it on fourth down. And a 
They didn't get enough for the first down, but that was a historic catch for Jarrell Jernigan. With that grab, he has now set the new school record for receptions in a season. So congratulations to Jarrell Jernigan. Broke a record that was set back in 1968, so it stood a while for the Trojans. And he's only a sophomore, so he'll have two years after this to try and break his own record. Will Goggins to punt it away. Freddie Parham back deep. End over end kick. It's going to land at the five. And I think they're going to, you now they're going to say it went into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. That was almost a fantastic play to keep it in the field of play. Yeah, but it's going to be ruled a touchback. Ball will be at the 20-yard line for Southern Miss when we come back. Almost perfection for Troy, but almost doesn't count here in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Capital One Bowl week continues on Tuesday night on ESPN with two highly ranked teams facing off in the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. It's Boise State against TCU. The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl week on ESPN, Tuesday night at 8 Eastern time. Boise State looking for a, a Baker's dozen in terms of wins. They currently have that dozen. They're 12 and 0. Looking for one more. One more. First possession of the second half for Southern Miss. Ball through the fingertips of Jodrick Morris. And maybe that highlights the fact that they're missing their bell cow. Difficult situation in the first half. DeAndre Brown, their all-everything freshman receiver. Guy who's got a chance to be great over the next couple of years. He came down awkwardly close to the end zone. Had to be taken off the field on a stretcher. He's currently at University Hospital. Here in New Orleans, we were told that he had fractured his lower leg. And uh, we wish him the best in his recovery because he does have a future. Quick pitch out in the flat. Gerald Baptiste gets out to the 25-yard line. And I like having that screen package. That's one of the staples of the spread when we ran it at Tulane. It was just a little too slow developing at that time. You know, Austin has to put a little more velocity on that football and get into the hands of his receiver quicker so that he can get upfield and make some things happen. Third down at five. Third down to been okay for Austin Davis and the Golden Eagles so far, converting five of eight. Off the back foot, the catch is made. Fighting for the first down marker, Jodrick Morse. Looks like he's going to be a little bit shy. Trevor Ford, number five. Came on and made a nice solo tackle. You know, as you see Austin in the pocket right here, he gets a little pressure, but not enough that he couldn't set his feet. If you can get that football a little bit more in front of the wide receiver, he has a better chance of catching it and continuing upfield and picking up the first down. First three and out for the offense of Southern Mississippi. Britt Barefoot punts it away. Jory Calvin. Retreats all the way inside the 20. And now he's got some running room. Calvin still on his feet. Calvin down the left sideline. Barefoot knocks him out of bounds. But a tremendous return. There is a flag down on the field. Calvin has really come on as a returner in the late stages of the season. And they're used to that at Troy. Over the last couple of years, Leotis McKelvin now doing fantastic things with Buffalo in the NFL. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 34 for the return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Leotis McKelvin was Media a dynamic timeout. returner for Larry Blakeney's team over the last couple of years. And right there, George Calvin doing his best Leotis McKelvin <laughs> impression. 68-yard return, all for naught. We'll come back. Troy Trojans will have the football. Football, the Arundel Carriers New Orleans Bowl is brought to you by Arundel Carriers, your global transportation provider. Chrysler, the way our vehicles come together is what sets us apart. And Capital One Card Lab at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet?
Well, it hasn't just been all about football over the last couple of days for both these schools. With Southern Miss and Troy getting out and about in New Orleans yesterday, both clubs going to New Orleans Children's Hospital and, and seeing some of the kids there and putting a couple smiles on faces. Kind of a nice scene to see. Troy with the football here. Their second possession of the second half, but good hard running to Juan Harris. Their 1,000-yard rusher showing you why there as he put some power into a step. And again, it's, it seems as though Troy, one of the things they want to get accomplished in the second half is provide a little more balance offensively. It seems like they're making a concerted effort to get Harris to football. And the official was actually ran into. And it seems like he may be a little woozy, might need a second to, to gather himself. That seems to be happening more and more frequently. Maybe they should put the officials in pads. That's a legitimate, legitimate thought there. It makes no sense to have these guys out there among all these great athletes, big, strong, and fast, and trying to just get out of the way. All right, well, we have this break. Let's go back to the studio. Kevin Nagandi has a sports center right now. All right, thank you, Eric. Uh, updating you in baseball, the L.A. Angels withdrew their eight-year offer for free agent first baseman Mark Teixeira. The Teixeira sweepstakes appears to leave the Red Sox, Yankees, Nationals, and Orioles as the four teams still in the mix. And look at this. Back and forth we go. Carolina up 28-20 to over the Giants in the fourth quarter. Battle for the number one seed in the NFC. D'Angelo Williams, his fourth touchdown of the game, 11 touchdowns in his last four games, guys. Let's go back to you. Yeah, thank you so much. D'Angelo Williams, he knows a thing or two about Southern Mississippi. He played in Conference USA from Memphis. And the Tigers, one of the all-time best in Conference USA. Along with my partner, Sean King, Tulane. You know the bad thing about that report is you see Carolina has 28 points, but I have Steve Smith in my fantasy, and he doesn't have any of those points, so that's not a good thing. How many players and former players play fantasy football? A lot of them. It's fun. Good. Pitch and catch. Michael Terry with the grab. He's out close to midfield. And I'm impressed with Levi Brown, Eric. When the ball's in that location, it's hard to drop it. I mean, look at where this ball is placed. For a guy running a deep in route across the field, he doesn't have to reach up. He doesn't have to extend himself. It's put right in his bread basket. Easy to make those kind of catches when you have a quarterback who can locate the football like Levi Brown can. Pickup of 17 yards. Little shovel pass to Harris, and Harris zigs and zags across the 45. Good first down yards. Offensively, Troy, they picked up a decent amount of yards, but remember, they scored on a defensive touchdown, so they've only scored 10 points with their offense so far through two and a half quarters. The Southern Miss has been extremely stout defensively. They've been, but not broken. I mean, they've been allowed. Troy's had some drives. They haven't been able to convert those drives into points on a consistent basis. Second and two. Playbook open here. Almost an interception. Two Golden Eagles had a chance for that football. Tacumba Bonaconda, number 41, was the last man who had the ball slide off the fingertips. But Eric Phillips, number 92, made that play. And he put a tremendous hit on quarterback Levi Brown. If you can see him coming off the edge here, he comes free and forces Levi to throw that football a little sooner than he wanted to. They had defensive end Rashad Bird drop back into coverage, and he was the one who first got his mitts on the football. All right, Jarrell Jernigan back in to take the direct snap, and he hands it off to Harris. And Harris busts it into the secondary inside the 30. That Harris is fun to watch. And he's excited. You know, both running backs from both teams, they have the ability to make a person miss in the hole. And you know, that's unique for running backs when they have that extra asset and they're extremely valuable to an offense. As you see right here, as Dewan gets in the hole, he makes 24 miss. Now you're to that second level and knows how you create big plays in the running game. Levi Brown back in the game is the signal caller. Keeps retreating. Caught. Cornelius Williams, his first catch of the day. 
Man, he is so accurate with the football, Eric. He shows extreme maturity in the pocket. His first, second, third, fourth read aren't open. Finds his fifth read, and that that is well defended. You know, but he puts that ball in a location, and it doesn't matter what Gerald McGray did. He was not going to break that pass up. And it's unique because quarterbacks at this level, still in college, don't really have that kind of accuracy on a consistent basis. Oh, it's a double pass. Jernigan looked like he was going to have a speed sweep to the right side, tried to throw back to Levi Brown, and that play was busted from the get-go, and now a flag's down on the field. Now, I don't think that one ended up like they drew it up in, <laughs> in the meeting room. There is no foul for ineligible downfield. The ball did not cross the line. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Generally, when you throw the quarterback throwback pass, the quarterback goes up the field. Well, Levi was still behind the line of scrimmage. I don't know if it's going to be a double pass or if the play just completely fell apart. We talked to the coaching staff. And that's something that they've been working on over the last couple of weeks of bowl preparation. That's some of the things you can do when you've got a couple of weeks to think about one game. <laughs> Maybe, Sometimes maybe I'll think yourself. That's what happens when coordinators have a lot of time on their hands. Brown in trouble going down at the 30-yard line. Sack recorded. There's that man again, Abanaconda, the senior from Marietta, Georgia, with the sack. So we've seen Abanaconda in pass coverage, now on the pass rush. And this is just a good job of being persistent by this Southern Mississippi defense. Whenever offense comes out and throws the ball as much as these two offenses do, they're ultimately going to be some sacks. And if the defense just persistent with what you got there, eventually they'll make the play in the backfield. Third and a bunch. They need to get to the eight-yard line, and they run the football. Xavier Moreland down to the 17-yard line. And now it looks like that's going to be enough to bring the field goal unit on. Sam Glussman began the season like a house of fire, made his first 12 field goal attempts, but really struggled down the stretch, making just four of his next 11. It's a 34 yard attempt. No worries. Glussman looking like the kicker he was at the beginning of the year. Knocks it through and breaks the 17-17 tie. Larry Blakeney's punch. Trying to get things done. They lead by three. That's going to be a good one. Kind of like we've got right now. The r &L Carriers New Orleans Bowl. This is the eighth edition, and that's what the trophy looks like. It's a big trophy. Yeah, and I'm sure it will look really nice in the sports facilities in the Southern Miss Archway. We'll, we'll see who gets the privilege of taking it home here in this fourth quarter. Both these programs have won this deal before. Southern Mississippi has won it twice. Troy has won it once back in 2006. Freddie Parham gets the ball out across the 30-yard line, and that's where Southern Miss will take over. They've done a great job of answering the scores of Troy so far today. Troy has had four leads now. They are up 7-0. Southern Miss tied them 7-7. They were up 14-0. 14-14 tie after that. Troy was up by 3, 17-14. Southern Miss came right back and tied them. Now Troy again up by 3. Can they keep the lead? Just like a seesaw. One side goes up, the other side goes down. They've been able to answer each other. I think they're two very evenly matched ball clubs. And I think it's going to come down to who has the football last. Austin Davis sets up the screen, nothing doing. Incomplete looking for Damian Fletcher. Sean, I want to ask you, we talked to Larry Fedora, the head coach of Southern Miss, and he said this offense is going to look a lot like a Rich Rodriguez offense. Rich Rodriguez was your offensive coordinator in the late 90s when you were Tulane. Does Larry Fedora's offense look to you like what you ran back in the day? It does have a lot of the, the pieces to the puzzle. Uh, one of the things that they utilize a lot more than we did is they run Austin Davis a lot between the tackles. Didn't run you? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
And this is Damian Fletcher between the tackles. He's out to the 35. You know, we sneak a quarterback draw or something similar to that in every time, but you know, I, I like the running backs to do the running and, and just let me throw the football. And if nothing's there, you know, I'll create something with my legs. But it seems like they've developed a running plan, game plan for Austin. And he's done an outstanding job of being able to utilize that asset that he has to help this offense be successful. And I think the longer that Coach Fedor is at Southern Miss, the more players he gets in that fit what he's trying to do, the better they're going to continue to get. Nowhere to go, and Davis swarmed by that man again, Boris Lee. That play had no chance at all from the get-go because of number two. And as a linebacker, what you're trying to do is to dissect things from that position. And right here, Lee does a good job of understanding what Southern Miss wanted to do. And he said, you know what? I'm not going to allow Austin Davis to get on the edge. I'm going to shoot the gap and make the play. That outstanding play by Lee to enforce Southern Miss to punt the football. And this is the first time you're right that Southern Miss has not answered Troy when they've come and scored. Troy defense stepping up. That's the second consecutive three and out forced. This is Brett Hicks coming on to punt the football away. And it's a short punt picked up on the fly. Oh, big opportunity for Troy. Down to the eight-yard line. Larry Fedora can't believe it. He brings in a new punter, and it's absolutely disastrous. Cornelius Williams in to field the punt, takes the short punt and goes all the way down to the eight. And this is a unique, you know, punt formation. A lot of teams are going to this, and they try and scoop the ball up the sideline. And Troy, you know, they game plan for it. They said, you know what, we're going to put a, a short returner up and a deep returner in case they try the little squib kick. You know what, it worked against Southern Miss in that instance. So a golden opportunity here for the Trojans. Jernigan takes the direct snap, hands it off to Harris. Harris, in a world of pain, breaks through the first wave and gets down to the six-yard line. There was a lot of movement behind that line before anything positive happened. <laughs> what outstanding job of Harris of finding a way to get back to the line of scrimmage and then making a positive out of the play that looks like it's going to be a, a big loss on first down. Almost seems as if Troy's out thinking themselves here. <laughs> well, I told you, you get coordinators a, a couple weeks with nothing to do, and they, they drop a lot of plays. Brown back in the game, in the shotgun. Into the corner, man open. Incomplete. Terry couldn't hang on. That was a good play by Michael McGee because this is actually a very accurately thrown football. But Michael McGee does a good job of putting his hand in front of the wide receiver, not allowing him to find a way to catch that football. Third down and goal, and now here's a switch on the fly. The quarterback, Brown, is out of the game. This is Jonathan Chandler. Now it's Jarrell Jernigan who's going to take the drip snap. Chandler's going to split out wide, the third string quarterback. And Jernigan finds the end zone. Touchdown, Troy. Well, don't look now, but the Troy Trojans. They're getting comfortable here in New Orleans. It's just a great job of Coach Blakeney and that staff. This offense just continuously puts so much pressure on the defense to be perfect all the time that if they continue to get chances, they're going to make plays because they have tremendous athletes. And just like that, the largest lead of the game for either side. Touchdown, Jarrell Jernigan, and it's a 27-17 lead for the visitors from Troy. And this is a direct snap, and Jernigan has an option. He can hand the ball to Harris, but his read tells him to keep the football and does a good job of just finding a crease, finding a way to get to that goal line. And it's a play that they can run with Levi Brown at quarterback, but Jernigan just gives him a little more athleticism, 
a little more wiggle in a tight, confined space, and that's what it took right there to convert that third down into a touchdown. What was the situation with that late substitution? Levi Brown left when basically they're breaking the huddle and, and Chandler came in to replace him. Well, I think they changed the play. I, I think they were going to call one thing and, and then they decided to go with Jurgens at quarterback and, and, and he had to run on it and take Levi's place. But they work on it every day. So there you wasn't a thought of deception there? They weren't trying to? No, I don't think so. And, and it wasn't even confusion. You do it every day in practice. They're used to making last-minute changes and substitutions. So I, it, wasn't, it didn't impact or affect Troy's offense in a negative way. Kickoff fielded at the five-yard line. Out across the 25 to the 30 on that return. And we have another flag, Eric. I don't think we have had a kickoff no. without a flag thrown tonight. During the return, holding number 16 of the return team. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Not much positive happening right now for Southern Miss. Capital One Bowl Week continues Wednesday night on ESPN with the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. Hawaii taking on Notre Dame. The Sheridan Hawaii Bowl is part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN Wednesday night at 8 Eastern. And Notre Dame, if they lose that game, they're below 500. They're 6 and 17. Jimmy Clausen got a chance to. Get a couple extra weeks of practice, maybe he will come back ready to play some football. They need him. They need Jimmy Clausen over the next couple of seasons to be the Jimmy Clausen they thought they were getting when he came out of high school in California. Hey, when you're six and six, Eric, I think you need a lot of people <laughs> to be a lot more like what you thought they were going to be. Boris Lee jumps on Austin Davis after a gain of one. Maybe including the head coach. This defense for Troy, they have forced two consecutive three and outs for Southern Mississippi here in the third quarter. Southern Mississippi front six, we're we'll making seven plays now here in this third quarter. And there's a man down for Troy. And that's Maurice Coleman, senior from Eufaula. Like the big fella may be okay. What's been the big difference here in the second half for Bear Woods and the Troy defense? Why have they been so effective? Well, I think they're starting to establish a, a, a physical dominance in the trenches over this Southern Mississippi offense. They've been able to dominate the line of scrimmage. Southern Miss has not been able to get an effective running game going, which is something that they had the first half. Davis hits Sean Nelson. The senior tight end has the first first down of the second half for Southern Miss. And Sean Nelson is definitely a pro prospect. As you say, he's a tight end, has the perfect body for that position. And he's, you know, a, a part of this offense that I think they should try and get more involved in this fourth quarter as they're going to try and make a comeback against this Troy defense because Troy's found a way to take away the vertical passing game from this offense and negate a lot of the rushing attacks. So now you have to focus and try and find another hole in this defense. Maybe it's the middle of the field to your tight end, Sean Nelson. Davis keeps it. Sidesteps the first tackler out to the 40-yard line. difference here in the second half. Southern Miss was dominating in total yardage in the first half, but the tables have really been reversed here in the second half. Struggling on offense thus far. Davis again keeps it, and it's going to bring up third down and short. And they may have some time to think about it. We're winding down here in the third quarter. Looks like they're going to use this time to 
to come up with exactly what they want to do. We're going to have a third down and one when we come back for the fourth quarter of play. Trying to decide who's going to be the 2008 winner of the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. So far, so good for Troy. The Southern Miss, don't count them out just yet. Tonight's ESPN College Football is presented in high definition. Here in the Crescent City of New Orleans, Louisiana. The Louisiana Superdome. Built back in the 70s, still a viable structure. A lot of events here in this great venue all year round. Third down and one, Southern Mississippi showing off some power. They run it with Torrey Harrison, and they'll have the first down. And that's a different formation than you used to see in my Southern Miss offense who likes to spread the football field horizontally and force you to cover sideline to sideline. They got into a heavy package, brought an extra tight end in and an extra running back and played some power football. How concerned should Southern Miss be right now down by 10 with 15 minutes to play? Well, depending upon what they do on this drive, if they're not able to go down and get some kind of point, production on this drive then I'll become worried because Troy seems like they're getting better and better offensively themselves so it's going to take I think more than 27 to win this football game. The winner of last year's game Florida Atlantic representing the Sun Belt Conference they defeated Tommy West's Memphis Tigers. Davis in trouble. Just throws it away. Remember this time last year, Austin Davis was a member of the baseball team at Southern Miss. Just decided to play football when Larry Fedora took over for Jeff Bauer as the head coach. Had spring practice with the team. Now is the starting signal caller as a redshirt freshman. And has done an outstanding job. In 21 touchdowns, only eight interceptions. Has run for another nine, so he's accounted for 30 touchdowns in his freshman season of football. So, I mean, that's a good season for a freshman by any standard. Yeah, the thinking was he was going to be the starting left fielder for the Golden Eagles. When baseball season rolled around, his brother Bo is the starting center fielder. Third down, Davis. Again, just has to throw it away under duress. Man, that Troy defense just ratcheted up a couple of notches once they got close to midfield. And, and this is what Troy has excelled at all season. They're ranked in the top ten in the country in both tackles for losses and sacks. They do an outstanding job of getting pressure on the quarterback. And you can see in this second half, they've been able to get to Austin Davis and make him uncomfortable. Now Britt Barefoot is back in to punt this one away. That is such a great name for a kid. It would be if he was not wearing shoes. George Calvin calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 10 yard line. Things going the way of the Trojans of Troy. They've got a 10 point lead and the ball. Larry Fedora's team in trouble. The Troy Trojans, their last touchdown drive set up by a poor punt for Southern Mississippi and a fantastic return. Cornelius Williams, 38 yards down the sideline, and Jarrell Jernigan takes the direct snap from center and runs it in. And it's the third touchdown of the day for Troy and their biggest lead of the day, up by 10. Now with 13-39 remaining. He's and, got the football back. And Troy can definitely put a damper in the hopes of Southern Miss getting a bowl win tonight if they're able to go down and lift the field and score a touchdown on this drive. Good start. Catch made by Zach Marco, junior receiver. And I, just, I just continue to say how impressed I am with Troy quarterback Lee, Levi Brown. His accuracy, I, I mean, he's the most accurate quarterback that I've seen this year in college football. Wow. And I think that's saying a lot. Where he's able to locate and place the football on a consistent basis, I've not seen anyone else do it as consistently as he is. And he was playing a JV game for Troy earlier this year against Georgia Military. Now the starting quarterback in a bowl game. Right up the gut, Xavier Moreland playing with that broken collarbone. 
gets the first down. Martez Smith with the tackle. It was two weeks ago that Xavier Moreland broke his collarbone in the game against Arkansas State. The game was on Saturday, had surgery on Sunday, was back in practice on Thursday, four days later, and now he's playing in a game. Xavier Moreland's a senior. He, he's been at Troy. This is his last opportunity to put that uniform on. He wants to be on the field with his teammates tonight in the RNL carrier ball. Jernigan made the catch and paid the price. He was lit up. To combo of Bonaconda coming with some vengeance. This is definitely a game your chin strap needs to be buckled. Matter of fact, I might go to the sideline, ask the equipment manager, can I have another button just to make sure that my helmet doesn't come off because it has been some contact on display tonight in New Orleans, Louisiana. Out of the pistol formation to give to Moreland. And he's back to the original line of scrimmage. It's third down and a bunch. Third down and nine, maybe third down and ten. Eric Blakeney trying to win this Arnell Carriers New Orleans Bowl for the second time. They defeated Rice two years ago on this field. Across the 50. And Eric, I know a lot of times analysts they make statements about the best I've seen. I'm telling you, Levi Brown is the most accurate quarterback that I've seen in college football. He's under duress, and watch where the location of this ball. He's going to throw the ball in this area, and it's going to be right where it needs to be. If you look in the backfield, he has a defender in his face. He doesn't panic. Now watch. The defender, Tim linebacker, has dropped into the zone. He throws it around him and puts it right on the numbers of his wide receiver. After the gain of 24, they go back to the ground. Juan Harris pick up with five yards on first down. And having played the position, I know it's not the easiest thing. Throw after throw after throw to continually put the ball exactly where it's supposed to be. But he just has a knack for being able to do it. It was two years ago in this RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl that Levi Brown was sitting in his dorm room in Richmond, Virginia. He was a member of the Richmond Spiders football team, was watching bowl games and said, you know what? I'm thinking about transferring. This, this offense doesn't suit my liking. Where can I go? Or oh, geez, I like what you're doing at Troy. He decided to transfer there, walked onto the football team, and now he's starting their bowl game and playing pretty darn well. Third down and four. Another strike. This one caught by Michael Terry. Where are you going, big fella? Oh, he had the first down, and then he retreated. I think they're going to mark him behind the line he needed to get to. But a Another excellent throw by Levi Brown. And you know, uh -oh. one thing about this Troy offense, though, Eric, there are a lot of good players, so when you get you touch the football, it's just inherently you want to try and make something happen. And that's an instance you probably should get north and south and just ensure the And Sean, it cost him. It did. Michael Terry was dilly-dallying, had the first down, went backwards. They go for it on fourth down, and they're stoned. So Southern Mississippi's going to get the football back. That's a huge blunder. Let's take one more look at this. Uh-oh, just a brain cramp. Terry had the first down, goes backwards, and it costs the Trojans. ESPN College Football, the R&L Carriers New Orleans Bowl, is brought to you by R&L Carriers, your global transportation provider. Windows, life without walls. And Nicorette White Ice Mint, experience a brighter way to quit. Now sometimes people make slightly bad decisions when they're on Bourbon Street. Moments ago, Michael Terry made a, a slightly bad decision for Troy. He had the first down, went backwards, and on downs, 
The ball goes over to Southern Miss. And, you know, spark star fires, Eric, so maybe that's the spark that ignites this Southern Miss offense who's been very dormant in the second half of this football game. They need to hurry. Down by 10, under 10 to play. Davis with the strike, complete to Jodrick Morris. And Morris down at the 44. These are just some of the things that have haunted Troy. There was the missed opportunity there on third down. And then they go for it on fourth down and one and no chance at all for Harris to get loose. So that means that Southern Miss has the football. And the momentum. A, a, a stop like that can ignite your ball club emotion and you can come back and utilize that to get something positive done. Moving pocket. Pass complete to Freddie Parham. Just a reminder, Austin Davis and Southern Miss, they're going to have to do this comeback without their stud receiver. DeAndre Brown hurt in the first quarter, fracturing his lower leg in an area hospital. Hopefully he will be okay long term, but he is out of this game. And offensive quarter, Daryl Wyatt, right now, if I was him, I'd be trying to find a way to get the ball to my superstar tight end, Sean Nelson, and let him make the play for us. Baptiste, nowhere to go. Wrapped up by Jorick Calvin. And it's going to bring up third down. You know, this Troy defense is just so athletic on the edges. You know, both of the corners, you know, Terrence Moore, Trevor Ford, Dark Cobb, Calvin Calvin. It doesn't matter who's in. They're so athletic out there. It's tough to consistently make plays. I try the middle of the field and see if I can sneak my tight end, Sean Nelson, down the middle field and get us a score. If they don't get it here on third down, I wouldn't be surprised if they go for it on fourth. It's maybe the go zone, as you like to call it. Hand off to Fletcher. And Fletcher's going to be short, I think, of the first down line. You surprised that play call? Not really, because they've had success with Fletcher running the football. But now it brings up a, an interesting call on fourth down. Because even though it's fourth and short, more than likely Troy's going to blitz. And as you see, Southern Miss run their short yardage package on the field, which is one of the things that we did with this offense when I was at Tulane. They've changed the rule now in college football. Quickly to the line. Designed quarterback rollout. Man is wide open, and it's caught. Big play. Jonathan Massey. Touchdown, Southern Miss. <laughs> We're going to take credit for that because Coach Fedora, he came down to Tulane and he definitely got that wrinkle out of the Tulane offensive playbook because that's one of the things that we used to do. We'd run a heavy personnel group onto the field and fourth and short, third and short, run play action and sneak somebody behind that defense just like Southern Miss did, executed it perfectly. If that was Larry Fedora or his offensive coordinator, Daryl White, with the play call, one of those guys has got the guts of a cat burger. <laughs> How about that for a play call on fourth and one? A 35-yard touchdown pass. Jonathan Massey wide open. Davis doesn't miss him. And Larry Fedora, let me tell you something. He is fired up. Southern Miss back in this game. There is a company that is like no other company in the world. CEOs got started here. Astronauts and software engineers. You see, this company is filled with dreamers, but they also have courage, strength, honor. And when they leave this company, it will be with a thousand opportunities and the respect of millions. They're strong, then there's Army Strong. To see strength like no other, go to GoArmy.com. And for the short era, conventional wisdom says that you're going to go for the first down, not Southern Miss. They're able to sneak Jonathan Massey deep down, go for the gusto. Outstanding play fake by Austin Davis. This is a staple of the spread offense that I think you have to have is the ability in short yardage situations to still create big plays. Great job by offensive coordinator Daryl White in dialing up that play at the very right moment. How about a tip of the hat to Larry Fedora for the confidence to go for it there? It shows that he has a lot of confidence in that coaching staff and a lot of confidence in Austin Davis. A tip of the visor. All right, it's a three-point game. 27-24, plenty of time. 
7.20 remaining. George Calvin is going to give way to Marcus Greer. This is Greer coming out, and he is brought down at the 16-yard line. Capital One Bowl Week continues on Tuesday night on ESPN with two highly ranked teams facing off the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. It's Boise State, a perfect 12-0, taking on Texas Christian. The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN Tuesday night at 8 Eastern time. Who do you like in that one? I, th I like TCU. You do? Yeah, I, I, I watched TCU play early in the year. They have athletes all over the field. I know Boise State, a lot of people more knowledgeable about them and their recent success, but I don't think Boise's as good offensively this year as they have been in the past. Chris Peterson, the head man for Boise State. He's playing chess when everyone else is playing chess. Well, he's done an outstanding job. You cannot argue with the success that he's had with that program, but I know TCU is a very good football team. They lost two games, but it was at Utah, who's still undefeated and playing in the BCS Bowl, and at Oklahoma, and there's no embarrassment in either one of those nope. losses. After a nine-yard gain, second and one. They run Harris, and he's having a hard time here in the fourth quarter. Can't seem to get away from that front wall for Southern Miss. Corey Williams playing his first game in a couple of months makes the stop behind the line of scrimmage. And, and this Southern Miss defense, after they got that stop, they ran onto the field with a different swagger. You can just tell the momentum is hanging in the balance, and this is a huge third down for both ball clubs. Four receivers in the game for Levi Brown. Harris in the backfield with him. Now changing things up. Plenty of time on the play clock. Maybe the worst pass of the day, almost intercepted by Martez Smith. And the Southern Miss defense created confusion. Levi Brown thought they were bringing a blitz. They dropped back into a zone. He threw the football directly to the linebacker. Let me tell you something. Troy caught a break right there. So the punt team will have to come on. Will Goggins, just a freshman, had to punt it away in a pressure situation. He's been solid so far today. Trying to kick it away from Andre Watson. Watson, that's a dangerous play. Southern Mississippi, they jump on the football. They'll have it. Good heads-up play. They're going to keep the football. I don't know if that ball hit Calvin or not. I, I think it's a smart play because I think there was some uncertainty as to whether the ball touched Watson. And I think just to make sure they, they make, we're going to get on it and make sure we have possession. This has been an interesting game. The eighth edition of the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. It's been nip and tuck the entire way. Southern Miss currently trails by three. 547 remaining. Southern Miss, the second place team in Conference USA's East Division, trailing East Carolina, while Troy, the champions of the Sun Belt Conference. First down pass is caught. Jodrick Morris makes the first man miss. Loose down the sideline, out of bounds at the 45. Jodrick Morris came into the game with one catch. He's been a revelation today. Hey, nice pitch and catch by Austin Davis with his wide out. And this is Colvin being aggressive, which he's been all game. But if you're going to be aggressive, you have to make that tackle because those quarterbacks are on the island. And when you miss it, it turns into a big play for the offense. 26-yard grab. It's now four catches on the day for Morris. Davis keeps it himself. Wrapped up and brought down Deion Gales. Gale's a local kid. There's the big fella. John F. Kennedy High School right here in New Orleans. The senior playing in his final collegiate game. That must be a real special treat playing here at home for your final game. Southern Miss trying to get a win. And 
keep the beat rolling. This would be their 15th consecutive winning season. But they need to win. They're six and six as we speak. Pitch out to Fletcher. First down and more. Still on his feet. Out of bounds. Inside the 35-yard line. Sean, this is the difference here in the second half. This is what changed momentum. It looked as if on a third down play, the catch was going to be enough for a first down, but the receiver went backwards after getting stoned on fourth down. Southern Mississippi, they convert on a fourth down, a 35-yard touchdown pass to Jonathan Massey, and now they've got the ball and momentum. Davis with the pump fake, wants the home run ball. Nobody home. Yeah, I like that decision by Austin Davis. They tried to run the fake screen and slip the wide receiver down the field. Troy did a good job of covering the play up. Don't force it, create a turnover, throw the football away, come back on second down, still have the football an opportunity to tie or take the lead in this ball game. Davis setting all sorts of freshman records as a quarterback in Southern Mississippi. Broke a lot of Brett Favre's records that he set when he was in Hattiesburg. Fletcher with the carry. Bottled up. Only able to get back to the line of scrimmage. And now this is an interesting part of the field. Third down and long. You're not quite in field goal range because your field goal unit is, is hardly suburb. So you've got some decisions to make if you're Southern Miss. Well, I think you're aggressive here, but I think you're also smart. You want to pick up the first down, and at the end of the day, you definitely want to gain some positive yards in case you do decide to kick the field goal. It becomes a more manageable field goal. And if they don't move an inch right now, it would be a 47-yard field goal. Here comes the blitz. Quickly, out in space. And Baptiste is wrapped up. Heck of a defensive play. Tavares. Williams. Now you're talking about a great defensive play. Not only did he make an outstanding tackle, but he had to fight through a blocker to make the tackle. And this is what you want. You teach your secondary players about being physical. He comes through, goes through the block, and makes the play. Now he forces Southern Miss into an extremely long field goal, which the percentages are high that you make this. As much better percentage as closer you get. This is going to be a 47-yard field goal attempt. Britt Barefoot. Oh, man, where you been all season? Came into the game, his long was 29. This one from 47. You just knew he was going to make it, though. I mean, he's, he's a <laughs> kicker, and his name is Brent Barefoot. You know he's going to make that kick. Brent Barefoot was 6 for 12 on field goal attempts on the year. Hadn't made anything longer than 29. So far today, a perfect 2 for 2. Made one from 38, and now one from 47. Maybe he likes kicking in the Superdome. The New Orleans Saints have had some problems this year. Taking field goals, maybe he'll get a tryout. And he can double as your punter. And just like that, we're tied at 27. 250 remaining. Now some of the grouches in the score by in the in the scorer's box, they just told us it's not a 47 yarder, it's a 46 yarder. <laughs> Still pretty impressive for Britt Barefoot. Ask anybody on the Southern Miss sideline. Only stat they know is he made it. He's so jazzed right now, I wouldn't be surprised if this makes it into the end zone on a fly. Uh -oh. I think that was his best kickoff of the night. Jorick Calvin brought down as he crosses the 20-yard line. Monday night, it's the battle for Lake Michigan. From Soldier Field in Chicago, the Packers take it on the Bears. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern Time. Coverage begins at 7 with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. This should be interesting. Let's see what Troy's made out.
the champions of the Sun Belt Conference. Trying to do it for Larry Blakeney. And they run on first down. Harris, no chance. It looks like Southern Miss is playing with about 14 guys defensively and, and, right and now. And all 14 were in on the tackle. And Southern Miss is hyped up. They're emo they have, the momentum in the game has swung. And it's going to be up to Levi Brown and this offense to put together a couple first downs and try and sap some of this emotion from this Southern Miss defense. As you can see underneath the names on both schools on top of your screen, both Southern Miss and Troy with the full complement of three timeouts. Those three dashes underneath Southern Miss and Troy indicate the timeouts remaining. Plenty of time for Brown. Incomplete. Trying to get it to Xavier Moreland out of the backfield. And you have to give credit to that Southern Miss defense. They, uh, Levi Brown was on option number five. When he finally found somebody who he could potentially throw the football to. I mean, right now, they're like white on rice right now. I mean, they're right on these Troy receivers, and they're not giving them any room to breathe. We've got a good one cooking here. Under two minutes to play. Troy needing to convert on third down. Brown. Pass sails high. Incomplete. A late flag down on the field. What's this all about? It's going to be a personal foul. The ball was uncatchable, and he, and he hit the Troy receiver on the sideline. Oh. Oh. They were looking for Kennard Burton. The pass well high. Personal foul, number 20, defense. Helmet to helmet contact. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Oh. C.J. Bailey called for that personal foul, helmet to helmet contact. And, and as we watch the replay, I, I think it's the right call because the ball is clearly out of bounds. And, and, and you see he tried to pull up at the last minute, but it's unfortunate. You know, it, it's a part of football if you ask me, but as the rule is written, it's the, it's the correct call. He was... And if, you, and if you ask C.J., C.J. will say, you know what, I should have pulled up. That's tough. That's a tough call, and it's a killer for Southern Miss. Drive stays alive for Troy. Brown just throws it away. That'll stop the clock with 138 remaining. We're in New Orleans, Louisiana. The RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Southern Miss coming out of the Conference USA, taking on the champions of the Sun Belt, the Troy Trojans. With my partner Sean King, I'm Eric Collins. This has been a nip and tuck affair the entire evening. Larry Fedoras, Southern Miss Golden Eagles against Larry Blakeney's Troy Trojans. Troy has the football. There's a strike complete to Justin Bray. This was earlier in the fourth quarter. Looked like Troy is going to salt this one away. Pass is complete to the receiver, Michael Terry. He has the first down, but then goes backwards. They have to give the ball over on downs, and Southern Miss, they convert with a touchdown pass to Jonathan Massey. Moments ago, the Brit Barefoot field goal ties it at 27, and now Troy playing for their lives. They've got the football in a third and three with a minute to play. Brown quickly out in the flat to their star, Jernigan, and he's got the first down. When in doubt, go to your all-conference performer. And that's one of the advantages of calling things at the line of scrimmage. They had a blitz came coming. Uh, Southern Miss showed that blitz. Troy able to get into a play that worked against it and pick up a big first down. So a fresh set of downs. Remember, Troy still with the full complement of timeouts. Harris caught at the line of scrimmage. Takumbo Abanaconda again. 
making the stop at the line of scrimmage and a timeout with 44 ticks remaining. And the Southern Miss defense has been stopped timeout. the whole second oh, half against the run. Charge. If Troy's going to get in the field goal range, they're going to have to rely on the arm of Levi Brown because Southern Miss is not allowing Dewan Harris any running room. In case you're wondering, the kicker for Troy, Sam Glussman, is long on the year, 48 yards. So he's got a bit of a leg, kicking on the dome, off turf. They need to get to about the 30-yard line to give him a realistic shot. He's been perfect so far today, made a couple of field goals. It's a nice trophy. Sure would look good in the football office at either Troy or at Southern Miss. Who's going to make the play down the stretch? to win the football game. Sean, you've been in these huddles before. What was just discussed among the Troy coaching staff and their players? They just want to make sure they understand where they're at down in distance in second and 10. We have timeouts. You don't feel like you have to get out of bounds, get as many yards as you can. Just trying to make sure they understand the situation and focus on the player about to run and execute it. Brown. Oh, looking for the home run ball. Incomplete. Michael Terry had it and then dropped it. It was Terry who had the first down a moment ago and ran backwards. He had a chance to atone right there. And these were two outstanding plays. An outstanding throw by Levi Brown. This ball is right on the button, but an even better play by Eddie Hicks to come over and dislodge the football from the Troy wide receiver. But Eric, I've been impressed with Troy quarterback Levi Brown. You can't throw it any better. This is interesting. On third down and 10, they're going to take Levi Brown out of the game, and it's going to be Jarrell Jernigan with the direct snap. And Jernigan's going to run it, and he's not going to get to the first down marker. What's the thinking there? Well, I think what Troy's thinking is if we throw it on third and 10 and we don't get the first down, now we give Southern Miss a lot of time to get the football and come back and score and I would think that Southern Miss would take a timeout right here clock still running clock is still running they're playing for overtime this is stunning Larry Blakeney's gonna let it bleed down to four ticks are they gonna attempt this field goal from the 47 yard line no I don't think so I think what they'll do is they'll throw a Hail Mary and either they'll get caught in the end zone or they'll go to overtime. And the interesting thing was that Larry Fedora and Southern Miss did not call the timeout. Well, Sean, this all began with about 25 seconds remaining. They had two timeouts. It's only fourth down and four. Well, if you're Troy, you're not going to go for the first down because if you don't pick it up, now two first downs and Southern Miss is in field goal range to kick it and beat you. But I did think that Southern Miss should have called the timeout and, and forced Troy to make a decision whether to punt the ball, or, which they probably would have done from where they're at on the field, and, and giving your offense a chance to make a couple plays. All right. But again, it's not it's not professional football. So the one advantage you have in college is that no matter who wins the toss, if it goes to overtime, both offenses will get the football and will get a chance to score. So you approach it a little differently, whereas in the NFL, if you lose a toss, you may not ever get a chance in overtime. Well, I think what people may be talking about in Troy, Alabama over the next couple of days, third down and 10, you take your quarterback out of the game and you have your receiver in there take a direct snap, not really even a chance of throwing the football. All right, leads to this. Fourth down and four. Final play of regulation, you would think. And that'll do it. He has busted Cordero Law with the sack. And we played 60 minutes of football, and absolutely nothing has been decided. I think Larry Fedora is thrilled right now. They were on the ropes. And he has to be proud of his ball club because there's a point about midway through the third quarter where you thought Troy was going to pull away and, and turn this into a route. But his team continued to fight. They showed perseverance. That defense especially stepped up and, and took away a lot of things that Troy was doing. And his offense made the plays in the fourth quarter when they had to make them. So I think Southern Miss has the momentum going into this overtime. So we'll have overtime here in the 
RNL Carriers, New Orleans ball. And in case you're new to this, we're going to have a coin toss, but that's not going to be the defining moment of this overtime like it so often is in the NFL. Both teams are going to get a chance to play offense and defense on the same end of the field. Each team's going to get a possession starting at the 25-yard line. We're going to do it until someone wins the game. This could go on for a while. There's not going to be any game clock. We still will have the play clock. And after the second overtime, if we're still tied, after you score a touchdown, you have to go for a two-point conversion. That's usually when things get a little bit sticky. This is old hat. And I actually like the college overtime rules better than I like the pro overtime rules. And I think both teams have played to a draw. Both deserve an opportunity to win it come overtime. Southern Miss has played an overtime game so far this year. They lost at home in a game against the UTEP Miners in double overtime. If they're going to lose in the top, they're going to go to Uruguay. You call it. You'll call tails. It's heads. You've won the toss. You have the choice. I want to go on defense first. To go on defense first. And you want to play on this end of the field. Okay. You're on defense. You're on offense. And we'll be on that end of the field. Media All right, timeout. you just heard it. The Troy Trojans will be on defense. When we come back, Southern Miss, they'll have the ball first. Don't go anywhere. Overtime in New Orleans. The eighth edition of the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl here in the Louisiana Superdome has been fantastic. It is an overtime game. Larry Blakeney's team trying to win this game for the second time, taking on Southern Mississippi. Southern Mississippi will start with the football here in the extra session. The redshirt freshman, Austin Davis, has been pretty darn good. He's going to have to lead his Golden Eagles starting at the 25-yard line here. Damian Fletcher, 1,000-yard rusher in the backfield alongside Davis. And they want to throw on first down. The blitz is on, and Davis succumbs. Brandon Lang is going to be credited with the tackle, the junior from Tucker, Georgia. And that's what Troy does exceptionally well. They get pressure on the quarterback. They're trying to run a real route to the tight end, Sean Nelson, up the sideline. He was actually open, but Austin Davis did not have enough time to win his wide receiver to get vertical down the field. They may have already dropped out of field goal range. After one play, we'll need to get it back. Davis wants to run. Brought down at the 22. It's going to bring up a third down and seven. John, how aggressive will Coach Fedor get on third down at seven? They, you would think they're in field goal range right now. Well, I, I think you get very aggressive right here. Because because you are in field goal range, but ideally in these overtime situations, you want to score touchdowns, especially if you get the football first. You want to put the pressure on the other offense to have to come back and match your touchdown. Four receivers in the game. Fletcher in the backfield. Lake clock down to four. The catch is made. Football's down. Incomplete. Incomplete. Jodrick Morris couldn't hold on. It's going to bring up fourth down and seven. Terrence Morris, some good defense there to separate the ball from Mr. Morris. And they're going to bring on the field goal unit. Britt Barefoot has been perfect so far today. Three for three on extra points. Two for two on field goals. A 38-yarder and a 46-yarder. Off the upright and in. The 39-yarder is good. <laughs> so Southern Mississippi up by three. Troy will have the football. Let's go back to the studio and get an update on what we'll get tonight on SportsCenter. 
Sports Center coming your way right after the game. Stan Vrett, John Anderson. You got overtime in college, overtime in the pros as well. Yeah, and both top seeds on the line in the AFC and NFC will break down the playoff picture. Coming up as soon as the game is done. And the folks in New Orleans, they know what time it is. Sports Center is next. <laughs> Ball just bounces right when you're a kicker and your last name is Barefoot. If Southern Miss wins, we're gonna have to give serious thought to giving the player of the day to Britt Barefoot. On first down, Levi Brown throws it away. Second down and ten. On the pressure to Combo Abanaconda for Southern Miss. Troy, they need a field goal to tie. A touchdown wins it. on the play call for Troy over the last couple of minutes has gotten fairly conservative. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Southern Miss has played exceptionally well in the second half. They've taken the running game away from Troy and made the offense one-dimensional. Catch is made. Jernigan out close to the first down marker. Looks like he's going to have enough. Location, location, location. Levi Brown put that ball in a location where his wide receiver, Jernigan, could not only catch the football, but turn up the field and pick up the first down for this Troy offense. Gerald Tate comes into the game, replacing Dewan Harris. to Jernigan. He's down to the 10. And if you saw the miss right here, none of this matters. You just do not want to allow Troy to get in the end zone. If you're Troy, you're trying to find any way. Get this football across the goal line because you don't want to get that Southern Miss offense back on the field. You want the game to end right here, right now. Juan Harris, the 1,000-yard rusher, back in the game for Troy. It's going to bring up third down. Big call here for Larry Blakeney's club. And if you're Larry Blakeney, you don't get too aggressive here because a, a, a field goal takes it into another overtime. You don't want to turn over here. And now they're going to call timeout and talk about it. So Levi Brown will go to the sidelines and get an earful. What would be a good play call? We watched 60 minutes plus of this game. What would be a good play call for the Troy Trojans here? Well, I think Levi has proven so accurate. I think you run something that allows him to have a sideline to sideline read. And I know it's rare that you say that for a college quarterback, but he's shown the, matur the maturity to be judicious with where he puts the football. And when he decides that and makes a decision, he's very accurate in where he throws it. So I think you can give him a full field read and say, you know what, if it's not there, don't be a afraid to throw it away. We'll kick the field goal and go to the second overtime. Won't go anywhere. Immediately after our game, Sports Center coming your way. A big day in the National Football League. A lot of happenings. We'll get you caught up on everything that happened in professional football. And of course, we'll have a recap on everything you may have missed in our game here, the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Here we go. Third down and six. From Southern Miss, I bring the whole kitchen sink. I force Levi Brown to have to make a decision and make it quickly. They're not coming. Just a three-man rush. They spit it out to Harris, and he can't come up with a football. Conservative defensively, conservative offensively. And now you put all the pressure on your kicker. And this Glussman kid began the season 11 for 11 then missed seven of his next 11 kicks. He's been riding that roller coaster. He's been perfect so far today. Two for two. Blocked! Blocked! 
Southern Miss wins! Michael McGee stormed in with his hair on fire. And it's the Southern Miss Golden Eagles with the W. football we've had the r and carriers new orleans bowl it goes to the golden eagles of southern miss they earned it with the kick block in overtime congratulations larry fedora his first year taking over departed legend ex-head coach jeff bauer came in continued the success that southern miss has had not only during the regular season and in the conference but in the bowl game as well kept his team together when things looked bleak and they found a way at the end of the game to get the victory And this is just an excellent job by guys playing all the way through. McGee extends his body, pinpoints where he thinks the ball is going to be, and blocks the field goal. So with the win, Southern Mississippi, they keep their streak alive. They have now had 15 consecutive winning seasons. They finished 7-6 and six in their first year under Larry Fedora. With the loss, Troy, they dropped to 8-5. and five. It is now a perfect three for three for Southern Mississippi here in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Winners in 2004, 2005, and now in 2008. And there you just saw tonight's player of the game brought to you by Capital One. We're going to give it to the kicker. Brent Barefoot getting it done. He, he deserves it, Eric. He deserves it. This kid had not made a field goal longer than 29 yards the entire season. He made three of them longer than 29 yards today. But for the rest of his life, we'll remember his senior season, he made the kicks that counted. Sure hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Southern Mississippi, a tip of the cap to Larry Fedora's bunch. They win by three in overtime. Our final score, 30-27 for my partner Sean King and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Eric Collins saying so long from the Crescent City of New Orleans, Louisiana. Coming up next on ESPN, don't go anywhere, Sports Center coming your way. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.